hello, welcome, welcome to the BCV broadcast. I am your host, Pastor Seiko Woods. Please do the following. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell at the bottom of this video. That way, whenever I go live or post any content, you'd be one of the first to view it. Also, if you would like to support this ministry financially, first and foremost, thank you so much for doing so. Uh, we thank you, those of you who have been consistently and faithfully supporting this channel uh, with your gifts and your tangible expressions of love. We do appreciate that. Uh, but you can do so by clicking the donation links below at the bottom of this video. Uh, Venmo, uh, Cash App, and Zelle are the three uh, options that we encourage you, the viewer and the supporter, uh, to uh, to employ and to uh, apply to support this ministry. And do thank you so much for that. If you'd like to become a body lifer, a body lifer are those who would like to make uh, BCV channel and love life and marriage with the woods, a part of their regular, uh, support and giving, uh, to ministries. And so there's no obligation. You can still do the same as the others. And by clicking the, uh, donation links below at the bottom of the video as well, too. Also, if you'd like to be, uh, supported by supporting and purchasing our BCV, uh, gear and merchandise, you can do that by going to the BCV store. Uh, the link is, is below the bottom of the video in the description. You can support it. Uh, this ministry by purchasing hats, hoodies, things of that nature. We have uh, in store and in stock for you uh, as well. And so we thank you for that. Moderators, thank you for joining. Thank you, uh, Facebook family, for being a part of this broadcast as well. We do thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, just making sure everybody can see me oh, good. Brother Tim, Brother Raymond, and others, welcome to the to the channel. I do appreciate that as well and again thank you moderators uh let me get a little bit of uh see who else we have here in the in the youtube uh chat let's see all right gracious hello hello sister good to see you as well lady saturn yeah you was here was waiting she said for two days <laughs> okay uh sister amanda good to see you as well thank you so much that's that's fine i understand not a problem and uh 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 Mr. Todd, we'll, we'll try to answer your question as well, uh, Apostasy Files, uh, whenever we can get a chance to that. If not, i uh, having to make a note and see if we can uh, respond to that if possible. Uh, brother Proverbs, good to see you, my brother. Sister Shireen, thank you so much. Since we'll be responding to your email uh, very soon. We didn't have a chance to uh, get to you, but we definitely will. And thank you so much, sister, for those shirts. We do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see, Jay Will, good to see you. Sister Monica. Good to see you as well. The missus is in the house. Always good to see her. Uh, Sister Lynn, I think I'm not sure if I mentioned her, but good to see you as well. Brother Rodney. Be great. What's going on, my brother? Good to see you. And I think others will be straggling in later on uh, as well. What's going on, Brother Scott? If you all have, have not had a chance to watch our interview dialogue or discussion Brother Scott and I, you missed the treat, but you can still watch the replay. I would encourage you to do so. It is a, a blessing. Uh, we were able to have a real good and honest conversation uh, on Friday. Uh, it was it was very, very good. Matter of fact, people's like, man, three hours went by fast. I mean, and, and, and those are the kind of conversations that you just, you know, the time goes by when you are just, you know, uh, having having good talk and good conversation and, and, and being able to. Um, be able to feed off each. I'm trying to read comments and talk at the same time, so forgive me. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, it was. I, I, I think it was one of one of my best um, broadcast to date. So I thank God for that. But, but yeah, so so you can go to the uh, go to my channel, check out the uh, replay. Uh, you can share it, get a little bit of uh, you know familiarity with with me and and brother Scott and our beliefs and views and, and positions that we hold. If you're not sure, trust me, at the end of that live, at the end of that, that broadcast, you should have no questions in your mind about what we believe. <laughs> so um, so gr glad to see uh, those of you here and those of you who have supported the, uh, the, uh, the conversation. Thank you so much uh, for that as well, too. So, um, but yeah, so what I want to do, uh, this, this conversation, uh, I'm going to bring... Uh, Brother Tarrin on in just a moment and have him introduce himself uh, momentarily. And um, and I'll just say this. I want to um, make clear my position and where I am uh, regarding the situation uh, with myself and, uh, and Brother Corey Minor. First and foremost, and I'm going to say this until 
situations may change for me to change my position. Uh, Corey Minor is a brother in Christ. Um, I love him. Um, contrary to what people may think or feel, um, I, I am not trying to destroy anyone, anyone at all. Uh, my, my heart and my intention is for all of us to be people who are consistent and be people um, who are of the truth. And, and we need we need all of us to do that because we're never we're never going to be perfect. We're never going to always uh, bat a thousand. As long as we live on this side of glory, on this side of the, of the cross, on this side of eternity, we will mess up. We will screw up. We will sin. We will we will sin horribly at times, but none of us should ever have the mentality or mindset that we cannot be held accountable for things that we do, especially those of us who have platforms and channels whereby we hold other people uh, accountable. The same standard by which we judge, the Lord says he, he's going to judge us with. And so I, I'm not sitting here trying to um, attack. I'm not trying to uh, belittle or demean anyone. But what I, my desire is, is for us to be people of the truth. And if we can't be people of the truth and be, and be people of consistency, then we need to just turn off everything and just go home. Because that's what the world is looking at, contrary to what we may think, what we may believe and, and, and feel. The world is watching. They're watching. They're, they're observing how we interact. They're observing how we deal with sin. They're observing how we deal with scandal. They're observing how we deal with issues while we're trying to tell them how they, do, how they are to deal with theirs. And so the moment that we um, have a, have a, a lapse or, or hypocrisy or things of that nature, it gives the enemy room to move. And it gives the enemies of God a reason to blaspheme. And so we don't want to do that. We don't want to be people that are the objects of mockery and defaming and blaspheme in the name of our God. And so we need to hold each other accountable as much as possible. Of course, we're not the local church. My ministry is not the local church. Uh, I, I, I'm a part of the body of Christ. And I want to come alongside the local church. But that does not mean because we're not a part of a local fellowship together that we have the right or we can do whatever we want whenever we turn these cameras on and these lights and power up our devices. Because we don't. Why? Because everything belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. They all that dwell in it belong to God. So therefore, uh, anytime we speak, we're speaking for, for God because we are his ambassadors. And so we must be consistent. We don't want to be consistently inconsistent. We want to be. We should desire to be consistent. Strive to be consistent. Strive to be balanced and not walk in bias. And when we see bias amongst in, in, within our ranks, we should be able to call it out regardless of the person or platform that they may hold or occupy. Because if we're, if we're focusing on people instead of the precepts and principles of God's word, then we've already lost. We've already tainted our witness. We, we're now telling people that man is the source instead of the word of God. We get our orders, we get our authority from scripture and only scripture when it comes to issues of morality when it comes to issues of ethics when it comes to issues of how we are to treat one another and our neighbors the word of god is the standard so i say that because this is not something that i am dancing and jumping uh, and and, and uh, dancing the jig and jumping with glee to address but it keeps coming up and it doesn't keep coming up from me but it keeps coming up with our brother Corey, when it is time for him to give a response or give an answer that we thought those of us who heard his his video um, and watched his statement titled "My Response to Drama," people were expecting for him to give a, a response and an answer regarding the statements that he made uh, a couple week, a couple weeks ago in responding to David Collins. And again, that 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 has not yet has yet to be answered biblically. And of course, the proverbial house is split. Of course, there are lines that have been drawn. Unfortunately, you have people who are on my side, and you have people who are on Corey's side. How about we stand on God's side? 
And whoever is right, that's what we stand on. And that's who we stand on. But we should never have this attitude because this person has more followers or this person has a softer tone than this brother or this sister or, or this person is more gentle in their quote unquote approach or because this person has it, none of that should matter when it comes to the truth. Yes, we may have our preferences. Yes, we may have our you know ways of how we can relate to each other. All that is fine. But none of that. And I do mean none of that is the standard by which we are to support anyone. If Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ, he didn't say, follow me as I follow Christ, as long as my tone is at the right level and balance as yours is. He didn't say, follow me as I follow Christ, as long as I don't offend you, or as long as my words are not seen or perceived as harsh. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And that is the standard and the only standard by which anyone, including myself, should have anyone's support, anyone's stance, because you're going to stand with something or you're going to stand with someone. Let's not let's not be so super spiritual and think that because I say, well, I stand with Brother Proverbs in this. That that means blindly following him. Well, I stand with, with Sister Monica in this. That means that I blindly follow him or her regardless. No, it is, re it is pertaining to an issue or it may be pertaining to a matter whereby they are saying what the scripture says and only what the scripture says. Again, Paul says, join with me or join me in following my example. He doesn't just say, just join me. He said, he tells you what the example is. The example is Christ. Those who teach Christ. Those who apply the word of God in Christ Jesus by the power of the spirit. These are the people that we are to support and we are to follow. Period. But the moment we start letting personality dictate and determine how we are to obey God, that is idolatry, brothers and sisters. And I would say to you that you too are in sin. And would need to repent. And so would I need to repent. Whatever is true, whatever is right, Paul says in Philippians 4, it must first be true. If it's right, it's of, of good report. If it is holy, if it's excellent, worthy praise, it says, let your mind think on these things. But it first must meet the criteria of truth. Because if it's not true, then we're following deception and lies. And God has saved us. He has sanctified us to be people of the truth. But there are times when we don't walk in truth. There are times we can have moments where we stumble in error, in sin, in hypocrisy. None of us are exempt from that. And so some of you may ask the question, well, why, why, why is this thing continue to keep going on? Why can't you guys just just get along? I have no problem with getting along, but getting along with what and for what and by what standard? I can't side with people who make slanderous statements toward other brothers or sisters in Christ when one moment they were standing with these brothers and sisters or this sister in Christ, i.e. Julie Royce. And now they are dismissing her and now standing and supporting John MacArthur. We can't do that and call ourselves consistent. We can't do that and call ourselves faithful ambassadors of Christ. We can't because too many are following us and particularly too many are following our brother Corey. And um, he has, he has a platform. So do I, but he has more. And so who, to whom much is given much is required. And so anytime we make statements and those statements are not found to be true and they're made publicly, then we are biblically obligated to respond to those things publicly. And so I want to lay out a few verses and, and put out the context here and lay, lay before you some context on what we are discussing uh, before I bring uh, Attorney McGrew on uh, momentarily. So in, um, in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 1, the Bible says, better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than he who is perverse 
in speech and is a fool. Chapter 20, verse 7. A righteous man who walks in his integrity, how blessed are his sons after him. Chapter 28, verse 6. Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than he who is crooked, though he be rich. First Peter, chapter two, verse 20. Peter writes, for what credit is there if when you sin <clears throat> and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience? But if when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God. And then in the fourth chapter, same epistle, verse 15 through 17. Peter writes again, he says, make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or a thief or evildoer or a troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed, but is to glorify God in this name. Why? Verse 17, for it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And this go back to first Timothy. A few books back, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 through 10. Notice what he said. But godliness actually is a means of great gain when accompanied by contentment. For we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. If we have food and covering, with these we shall be content. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare, and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil, and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. I wanted to lay those verses uh, before you, um, be just before bringing uh, my brother on to talk about this matter regarding Brother Corey and and to um, and to respond to some of the statements that he made in, in in prior videos that I found to be disappointing and also concerning and troubling. And I believe after the end of this this live, so will you. <clears throat> so uh, my heart and my goal uh, is not again to destroy any man, not to slander, not to uh, defame. That's not my role. That's not my position. It never has been. My responsibility is for us as believers to hold each other accountable when we are off the mark. That's the, that's the role. That's the responsibility. And so, and all of us are called to do that. Anytime we make statements, anytime we make comments or give information and it is not true, the Bible says that we are to admonish each other. We are able, we have the ability to do so with the word of God being the, being the standard. So I want to introduce for many of you who may not know this brother, he, he has been on my platform before. I've uh, been knowing his brother for, for quite some time, for many years. Uh, he is a friend. Um, he is a, a brother in Christ, of course. Um, I, I definitely value his wisdom. I value his expertise. And never, whenever I have questions that uh, need to be answered regarding uh, the law, uh, regarding issues that may affect, um, you know, how I you know do things and, and how I operate uh, regarding content, I can always go to this brother, and, and, and I appreciate his, his unbiased and uh, faithful uh, response and, and information. So without any further ado, I introduce to you Brother Tarwin McGrew, in the flesh, from the N.O. You heard? <laughs> What's up, brother? What's up, man? How you doing? Doing good, brother. Doing good. Let me bring your volume down a little bit. You, you, like you about to All right. Okay. I was coming in high. I yeah, thought we were, uh, huh? fixed all this before. <laughs> 
<laughs> good. You're good. Okay, man. So you good, bro? How you doing? I'm doing good. Good, man. Good, good, man. man. Glad to see you, brother. Glad to see. You. I know we uh we were talking about this matter. You um you actually were a part of the uh panel discussion. Was that last year that I had that I called? It was you, uh brother Xerix, uh Corey, brother Sean, uh Dre. Yeah. And um yep. and Scott, right? It was just, uh, all together. Yep, about a year ago. Yeah, about a year ago. Can you tell the uh can you tell the audience a little bit about that? Um, you know, what 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 precipitated that? Why did I bring you guys on and what was your what was your role and your involvement uh in that? If you don't mind. Well, yeah, I mean you had the issues with the mob uh, yeah. that was going on at that time. And you were feeling like the weight of the the matter on your shoulders and you wanted some accountability and some counsel in terms of how to move forward uh in the midst of that conflict and so uh i was just among several brothers that were called upon to just kind of meet and confer if you will and so i mean my role in that was just to kind of be a voice of wisdom as it were along with a lot of other brothers who i respect and probably would value their opinion more than mine uh but uh it's like the pre you know in the presence of many counsel you know there's wisdom there and so i think that that was the purpose of that panel and i was honored to be a part of it yeah and uh i would say that basically when uh when we had that conversation <clears throat> and we had that discussion um you know we pretty much laid everything out on the table it wasn't something where um i was trying to hide anything um, you yep. know, I said, Hey, of course I can do things differently, but where is the sin? You know, where's the sin? I want right. to know where was the sin? Um, because right. people were, were always saying, well, he's in sin. He's in sin. Look at what, look at what he said about this. And look what he said about that. And would take clips and take, you know, snippets out of his intended context and, uh, make it certain, make it sound a turn to be something that it never was. And so, you know, which caused a lot of confusion, which caused a lot of, you know, uh, you know, sides to be, you know, uh, to be made and drawn. Yep. Um, and some relationships and friendships were, were disintegrated and broken, uh, as a result of that. Um, but here we are again today now dealing with, I believe a public matter, um, that I also believe the body of Christ, we need to be informed with the truth. Um, and so that's why I, before I brought you on, I wanted to you know, lay out some scriptures because I believe that these things are appropriate on what we're going to be uh, discussing and talking about today regarding, you know, uh, Brother Corey Minor and his testimony, um, his testimony regarding uh, him being in prison. And, and why, and I guess the, some people well, maybe will ask, why are we talking about his prison, you know, his prison experience? I mean, that was in the past and, and, and true, it, 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 it is in the past, but why are we talking about that now? Well, part of the reason is, is that it's, it's a story that uh, has been thrust into the public sphere in turn by, I would say, Corey's own doing. Um, and it's not to say that, all right, now that you said it, you know, let's bring in the wolves and just uh, throw all all of the attacks that we can across the story. Right. Uh, but I know I've been following, uh, I had followed Corey's channel for a bit, and uh, I actually had no idea that he had spent any time in prison until he actually mentioned it. Uh, I think initially it was kind of casually mentioned in a video here, a video there, and then uh there was an entire video made to kind of describe that uh whole ordeal but then it's like it it's being thrown and and, and offered up and it's like well when you first hear it you're thinking well man this sounds like a big miscarriage of justice and then you just figure well let me look into it I mean, maybe there's something we can do for the brother and then as you start to kind of dig into it uh there's some inconsistencies that i know you and I have seen and, and just drew some concern uh, yes. because of the accounts that we've seen and, and what we've been able to discern from what's available to us. 
Yeah, and I think that that's where I, I believe a lot of us um, once once we I guess you know uh, deal with this and and present what we see, which is again, this is nothing that we had to um, dig like you know in the in the treasure troves of somebody's business. This was this is public information um, because again, I didn't know anything about Corey's past. Would have never known about it uh, until he brought it up. But what made it become more of a concern for me was when. Uh, just shortly after him making the comment uh, regarding Eileen Gray and the question that, that Brother David uh, Collins had had asked him, uh, would you go to Grace Community Church if Eileen Gray were your daughter? And he caught the ire and umbrage of a lot of people, contrary to what some people may think, but he did because because most people were, were shocked and just you know amazed that he would respond or not or not respond in a way that most would have responded if the question were were presented to them so that that drew a lot of a flack and i would say rightly and understandably so and so then he produced a video saying let me clarify and it didn't seem to be clear it seemed to be it seemed to be even much more of a of a conflict and made it made it much more worse uh, than what he had initially said. Then he sub subsequently followed his video with um, my response to drama. And people were thinking that he was going to this time finally respond to the statement and to the issue. And he brings up his his prison, his prison experience and use that, in my opinion, he used that as a cover, as a shield, as a deflection to to not deal with the issue but to draw, I believe, in my opinion, to draw sympathy or to draw himself to be seen as the victim because he kept saying when people are coming after you and people are coming after you, well, I know particularly I'm not coming after this brother. I don't know anyone that was coming after this brother um, because we were all concerned. And so when you present, when you constantly keep presenting information and then saying that the justice system was not fair, that that you were were innocent, but you kind of wasn't. I mean, it, you 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 send these mixed signals and mixed messages, and then as a Christian, you know, we're to test all things and hold fast to that which is true. And so now you keep bringing this up, saying that you know, uh, you you went to prison. It was only one time that this happened, and and now you're um you know you're being you're being you know, uh, vindicated, that God vindicated you. And so when I when I when I responded to him, I'm like, based on information that I did see, brother, how were you vindicated when you went to prison for a crime that you did commit and that you did admit to? So how can you say that you were being vindicated? And how can you say that, yet, that during this time that you are a person of integrity or cite scriptures that 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 would be for people who have not been uh, guilty of of wrongdoing or guilty of crimes worthy of you know imprisonment and things of that nature so it caused me to uh it caused me to do some research and when i did i was disappointed i was i was really shocked because what we were told is not what was being presented um on his channel and definitely not what was being presented in the in the uh in the court documents Dalton. yeah and I, I just want to reiterate uh the point you made earlier i mean this is not an attempt to tear down the brother. No. Uh, as I mentioned, I mean, I've listened to his channel for quite some time. Uh, and like you said in the beginning, he is a brother. It's right. not about my opinion, whether I think, no, he is a brother. And so I think the purpose of even going through this exercise is not as a means of tearing down, but as a means of appealing in a way to say, listen, brother, I mean, this is what you're saying. This is what we're seeing. Uh, we would love for you to reconcile the two, uh, you know, and, and call you to the to at least be consistent, as you said, said earlier, uh, in terms of how you're representing the facts and what happened. Right. So, right. So so let's let's go ahead and uh, and get and get this thing uh, started. I guess, Tarwin, we're going to we're going to play some clips. Uh, and some of you may have heard this before, but we want to play some clips, I believe, now in its context and, and given what we do know uh, that has transpired, it, it is going to cause some of us to uh, to to raise concern. So um, if you're ready, bro, I'll go ahead and start and first. We, yeah, so go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. But one more point before sure. as you pull that up is. You know, because I think people will look at this and, and again, it's the whole trying to 
refute the tear it down counterpoint. Sure. In that this is not this is not about me. This isn't about Seiko. I mean, this is about uh, the body of Christ, not only as it is represented in your own local church, but as it is represented here publicly on a platform like YouTube. It could be on Rumble, Facebook, TikTok. Doesn't matter. I mean, as believers, I mean, we are called. And we are ambassadors of the gospel. We are called to a certain standard. Uh, if I were to get up here, Seiko were to get up here and say something silly uh, or off-putting or in sin, we we are duty bound to call it out. Uh, and so I mean, this is just this is part of that exercise, uh, but it's it's a loving rebuke to be called and be reconciled to the truth. So now, why would you call it a rebuke? That, why would you Why would you call it a rebuke? <laughs> Since you said it, let's that, go uh, there. Trick like, question, let's go. my brother. Yeah, well, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's say the answer to that question as we go through, because I think sure. what I, I would I would say the short answer to that is because when we see the inconsistencies here, um, it 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 could very well be arguably said like, listen, this this may very well be sin, and if it is that, then we have to rebuke. Yeah. Uh, but maybe rebuke is a strong word because my sensitivities to to Corey are pretty high. So yeah, uh, maybe it's just a loving plea instead. A loving plea, soft rebuke, and even if he persists, a hard rebuke. I mean, as as we're called to do when these things uh, when these things persist. So, all right, well, brother, you ready? Whenever you're ready, we can get this thing set up. We can go whenever you're ready to start. Let's go, man. Let's get it. This Let's is go. clip number one. I'm married at the time, and I'm focusing on ministry. We moved from Lubbock to Dallas because it's hard to make a living in Lubbock, even though the cost of living is low. Uh, I am an investment advisor. I'm working for Edward Jones. Um, and so after I leave Edward Jones, I start my own firm. And I've got a nice little office and I get a bigger office and an extra offices and multiple employees working for me. And I'm feeling myself. I'm thinking I'm the baddest thing. Oh, by the way, at the church, I'm one of the uh, associate pastors. So in this clip, he says he was an associate pastor. Um, that would presuppose that he's a Christian. Yep. Okay. So that means now you're in a position of, of authority. You're, you're one of the officers of, of a local church. And so by, 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 by Corey's own admission, he's saying that he was an under shepherd at the time. Uh, I believe this is, you know, of course it's had to be prior to him going to prison, because this, these things start to unfold, but he was a professing Christian when this when this had occurred. Um, I don't think, and I don't recall. I don't recall watching this until 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 this weekend, this past this this weekend. Um, but I know for some of us, it probably flew over our head. And now listening to it again, uh, because now it takes on new eyes, it takes on new ears. I didn't know if you wanted to comment on it before we go to anything else further with that. But no, that's different. that's fine. Okay. All right, well, here's the second clip. And people are patting you on the back. Brother Corp, oh, Pastor Corp, Brother Corp, that was, that was wonderful. And so you start feeling yourself even more. Well, here's what happened. Um, I'm always moving. and I'm trying to make this happen here at the church, this happen here at home, and this happen on the job. Some of you all know this part of the story. I don't, and I won't go too much into it, uh, but I got frustrated at home just because I'm moving too fast, and uh, I ended up, unfortunately, having an affair. The worst thing that I could ever do in my life, have this affair. So that was another thing that was that was troubling. I mean, he he did admit publicly that you know um, that he had an affair while being a pastor, while being a Christian. Um, that would go into. A couple of a couple of, of scriptures. Um, I'm reminded of Proverbs chapter six, verse thirty two to thirty three. Um, I'm not going to populate it because, I, but I will. I'll just I'll just read it, and then give the corollary verse, uh, correlating verse to that um, as well. Because again, if we're talking about the context and the history behind this, then all of these things matter regarding uh, regarding our brother. First, I mean, uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32 through 33, it says, The one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense. He who would destroy himself does it. 
wounds and a disgrace he will find and his reproach will not be blotted out or will not be wiped away. Um, and that phrase reproach is also used in first Timothy chapter three, when it gives the qualifications of, of, a, of a pastor. So let's go there. Um, and again, I'm just reading them. You guys can can cite them yourselves uh, later because I want to lose my my screen here with my brother on this interview mode. Um, verse one, first Timothy three. It is a trustworthy statement. If any man aspires to the office of overseer, it is a fine work he desires to do. Verse two, an overseer must then be above reproach. You just stop right there. It stops right there. If Proverbs chapter six, verse 32 and 33 says, if when a man commits adultery, his reproach will never be wiped away. Well, who do, who do we know that reminds us of that? David, mighty king of Israel, Yes, he slew Goliath, but we do remember his adulterous affair with Bathsheba. We remember that. It's unfortunate, but it was remember we do remember that. And so people may try to use that as an excuse. But he was he, he but God restored him, but he was not a pastor. He was a king in Israel. And God rebuked him and dealt with him. So when we look at this, and I know that there are there are churches who will who may differ their differences of opinion regarding this because they say, well, depending on the timeline of events and things of that nature. Yeah, some people say if a person that's a pastor commits adultery, then they're, they're utterly, completely, totally disqualified. They cannot be a pastor anymore. Have other people will say, oh, it depends on the timeline of, of, of offense. Okay, well, fine. The question we have to ask ourselves is this. When this situation has occurred, and Corey did a video on, on John Gray and John Gray committing adultery, he did a video saying John Gray commits adultery again or cheats again. John Gray cheats again. How not to repent is what one of the, the subcaptions said. So that's that's troubling. Um, and that can be problematic because now I do recall Brother Corey doing a video and he was going through these criteria, going through these these uh, qualifications, rather, for for being a pastor. And he had told his his uh, his viewers and his sub uh, subscribers and followers of his plans to plant a church. And he said he, it was going to probably not be in Texas. It may be somewhere up north, Midwest, or somewhere like that. He was he was gathering, you know, people's opinions and thoughts about where did he, if he were to move, where would he, you know, where do you think he should plant a church at? And people gave their thoughts and ideas. Little did anybody realize or know, and probably even had even remembered our brother's our brother's story, because if that's the case, then he does not qualify to be a pastor. Now, if this had happened before he got saved, then that falls under 2 second, second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, be all, all things have become new. But he's on record saying that he was a Christian. He's on record saying that he was an associate pastor. He's on record giving his testimony uh, re regarding this. So it's not, this is not an attack. I'm just saying, how, how, do, how, do, we, how do we stay consistent and faithful to the scriptures if we give this person to pass, but we don't give John Gray the same pass. That would be bias and favoritism, would it not? I know if you could you hear me. I don't know if your mic was gone. I know if you wanted to respond. No, I heard you. I, heard okay, you. I, I didn't. You. I didn't realize you were passing it to me, my brother. I did, sir. I did. <laughs> no, uh, no, you're right. And the only thing I'll add to that is uh, we are not. This is also not an attempt to relitigate the past either. No, it's not. Uh, and that will be especially true as we go through some of the other clips that uh, he has lined up to this evening. Um, but at the same time, what we are trying to juxtapose is these are things you're saying now versus this is what happened in the past. So we're kind of establishing a bit of a timeline here. Right. It's all. OK, so let's go on to uh, clip number three. And I believe that was the beginning of my downfall. Um, because if I don't honor this woman, then God is not going to even hear my prayers. Well, what happened was this. Um, all of a sudden, it's like God just started blowing on everything. And so my the, uh, the vice president, he leaves. Uh, this person who's over our, our mortgage division, he leaves. This person over insurance leaves. Our main office um, administrator, she leaves. I didn't re realize how much she actually ran the office. Uh, then this other one, this operations manager leaves. It's like this happened. Bam, 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 bam. Everything's happening. Lord, what's going on? Well, the Lord was trying to tell me, Corey, you know good. 
And so I'm going to deal with you and I'm not going to deal with you the way that I deal with regular lay people. No, because here you are supposed to be a pastor and I got something for you. Remember guys, uh, people who teach, they are under a stricter condemnation when they fail and I fail hard. And, and, and that's a, And that's a great thing for him to say. And, and I'm, I'm glad that he, Amen. That, he, that he made that, that he made that statement and he was citing James chapter three, verse one, let not many of you become teachers for doing so we will, we shall incur a stricter judgment. So I have no argument. Uh, and, and that uh, at all. My only concern with this is that when the when these things occurred, and when it happened, uh, would you would you you know would this still qualify you to be to be a pastor? If you already said that you were a pastor at the time of this, because if that's the case again, then Carl Lentz is he qualified to be a pastor because he did the same thing? Is John Gray qualified to be? I mean, is any man? qualified to still be a pastor if they have been guilty and have found, you know, guilty of, of committing these, these kinds of sins. Yep. All right. So, um, I guess let's continue on. We are in, uh, let me see, this will be clip number four. What happened was, here it is. People are going to say, well, Corey, what happened to you? Why did you go to prison? What happened? Here's what happened. Because all these things were going on and I'm taking my, all, my eye off the ball. I said, you know what? I'm not going to let this business fold. So I took money from this guy's account, covered the uh, office expenses. And when fees or commissions would come back in, uh, I'd put it back in their account. Now, it may take a month or so for it to come back in. But in the meantime, they need a statement. And I would give them a statement that said uh, they have this when it really they really didn't have that. Because in my, my thought pattern... No harm, no foul. They're going to get their money back, right? I didn't have permission to do that, obviously, and the government does frown on that. Okay, so here's where I believe it becomes, you know, um, even more concerning. Because again, yeah, the government frowns on you, but you took something that didn't belong to you. That's that, that's you know, you took money. That's called stealing. And as a pastor, as a Christian, yes, that 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 is a problem. Um, Exodus twenty verse fifteen. That's the eighth commandment. Uh, Ephesians 4, 25, therefore laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each of one of you with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Verse 27, uh, verse 28, excuse me, he who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor performing with his own hands what is good so that he will have something, uh, that he will have something to share with those in need. So um, did that, was that a, a, any any concern to you uh, of what was said or how it was phrased or worded or or anything like that? So, yeah, and so you and I talked about this, but the, the concerning part is kind of the cavalier way in which this is kind of presented. Uh, you know, the government frowns upon uh, what he did. And the reality is, is that it was, it's an extremely serious crime. And I know Curry knows this. So again, not trying to relitigate the the past but at the same time uh you gotta in terms of representing what actually happened uh there's a number of accounts that don't line up with just a mere they just happen to frown on and just happen to pick on you about what happened and i don't know if we're going to get into it on this clip or if there's a future clip that you want to get into uh kind of getting that uh, kind of laying out exactly what that looked like but uh just just let me know that sake over yeah I, I believe it'll be coming up in this next clip it should be clip five where he talks about the mail fraud right but, all right so before but before we even get to that i mean sure again the timeline is is like what what is in the past is in the past what you're saying now about the past right uh does not quite line up with the accounts that are, have been made about what happened in the past and so the, the the question is is again not trying to be messy, not trying to tear tear the brother down, but it's about uh, it's about being truthful, um, and it's a loving plea to 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 uh, be more reconciled to the truth than uh, to be worrying about whatever may be motivating you to kind of obfuscate what's actually happening. So there'd be no different, I guess, if I would say you know if I did a, a prison stint. And I come out and I said, man, I was innocent. I was innocent, man. I, you know, I didn't do any of this stuff. And I, and this is my story. You know, I, I was, I was wrongly, I was wrongly, you know, uh, uh, criminated. 
uh, I was wrongly, you know, treated. And and but then the the court documents say otherwise. And I guess it'd be no different mm -hmm. if we're talking about the Eileen Gray situation. We have her court documents. We have her testimony. We have the testimony of the children. We have the testimony of of other witnesses that can that can confirm and attest that what David Gray did was exactly what he did. Then we also have his own words that are that were that were in document, his own written statements and things of that nature. Although we weren't there, but here are the documents that we have. So if we're if we're saying that we can receive and accept one person's you know statement on record, documented evidence. Why are we bristling when it comes to people that we think that we know or because of people whose whose um, content or because of people whose platform we may enjoy and we may like? Right. And 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 uh, here's an example. Uh, sure. So he in that previous clip, he, he said that he, he he admitted what he did in terms of uh, taking client funds that were intended for the purchase of brokerage or, or securities and used them for his own personal benefit. Uh, but then you kind of said, I'll replace them when the fees and commissions came in. But here's a brief statement of facts from a, uh, and actually this brief statement of facts was from a document filed by his own attorney uh, who was withdrawing from the matter after it had been litigated and the plea agreement had been signed. It says that uh, Mr. Miner owned and operated a securities brokerage firm named Christ Miner Investments. Miner sold securities to the public. The government alleged that Miner obtained money from individuals by knowingly and falsely, falsely representing to the customer that the money would be used to purchase a particular security when it was actually used for another purpose. The government also alleged that Miner would send falsified account statements to customers in order to conceal the fact he had not used the customer's money to purchase securities. Uh, so th that's a far cry from merely, well, I just kind of moved money here, paid some things off, and then I would have replaced it. I'm not saying you got to, every time that you mention this, uh, you got to give a full account of what happened. Uh, but this is only one example of several instances where this prison stand is mentioned. And almost every time it's just kind of, it's mentioned in the light as if uh, he was railroaded by the system uh, and that there was actual and factual innocence involved. And I guess as we go through some of the other clips, we'll kind of flesh out what really happened. Sure. All right, well, let's get to the next clip. This is uh, clip number five. Well, the federal statute that I violated was the federal mail fraud statute, statute uh, Title 18, um, Section 1341, mail fraud, to send a fraudulent statement through the mail. Well, it was my first time. <clears throat> Even though I grew up rough in some bad neighborhoods, I actually never had a crime uh, on my jacket before. I got caught one time um, with, the, with some other kids stealing, stealing some juice out the store, but they just called my mother on me and I got a whooping, right? So nothing in my, in my, I'm saying in my jacket, that's, how, that's prison talk, but nothing, no rap sheet, no, no priors. So I'm thinking I am going to get, you know, a year, two, three years, maybe three at the most, possibly probation. So, uh, his, 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 his response was because it was a one-time offense. Correct me if I'm wrong. Cause I, you know, this is where, this is your wheelhouse. I don't want to, you know, say anything that's not um in lines with you know the the legal system that's your that's your forte so um i'll let you out of floor with this one <laughs> so uh again uh, before i even go into that uh because i you and i talked about this uh yesterday i mean the tone of what this discussion uh is more like we're not trying to be on the attack uh, and so I don't want to make it sound like we're trying to relitigate it, but right. the truth of the matter is, is that like mail fraud is, it's a serious offense. Uh, and, uh, I commend Corey for being very transparent, at least about, uh, the charges that he faced and particularly being transparent about, uh, his prison term. I appreciate that in the, uh, videos that he's done, uh, even recently, uh, but again, it's kind of glossing over the seriousness of the actions. And the thing about mail fraud is we, and we talked about this previously too, it's, mm. a, it's considered in the law a crime of moral turpitude. Mm. And so what that means is it, it, it is a 
it's different than let's say an assault and battery. So like if I'm in an assault and battery, that's like one of those heat in the moment crimes where, you know, one person says one thing, another person says another, you get fist to cuffs happen, uh, somebody gets seriously hurt and you end up being charged for that. Uh, but the thing about crimes of moral turpitude, such as like fraud, embezzlement, things like that, is that there's a level of deliberation and there's a level of planning that is involved in those that rises, that the law considers at a very high level, you know, in terms of the level of criminal intent, right? Uh, the other thing about mail fraud is it's not a extremely difficult legal stand legal hurdle for prosecutors to clear uh, they merely need to prove that there was an intent to uh, there was a plan and intent to dis to defraud and then that you used a uh, commercial or u.s postal service uh, mailing uh, carrier service in order to carry out the plan and they uh, prosecutors often will colloquially kind of refer to mail fraud as their favorite crime because it's very easy to to prosecute. Um, and so all of this is to say that it was a very serious charge and not one that can be taken lightly, especially as a believer. Yeah, and I think that's where the, you know, that's where the concern comes in. And, I, and I'm glad. I'm glad. It's it's unfortunate we had to keep restating that we're not trying to attack because I, you know, I'm not trying to even go through the comments. But there are a couple of people like we're airing out his dirty laundry. No, we're not airing out his dirty laundry. He aired out the laundry, but he's only selecting what kind of underwear he wants to put on the line. That's the difference. Because if I'm saying that the system did me dirty, then then that puts the system that may not have done me dirty in this situation. In a negative light, maybe this system has treated you with justice because you broke the law. You may not were you may not were, uh, were expecting to receive the the maximum penalty for this one time offense. But I believe as we go on and go through these documents, we're going to see the reason or reasons why such a charge was was considered more harsh than than what may have been expected or 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 assumed. So. Um, but I, but I, I know that people are saying, well, he discussed all this before. I, to my knowledge, I never heard it. I never heard it discussed. I'm talking about recently where he has gone on record appearing to be the victim, appearing to be the one that God vindicated because he was, he was done wrong. That's the concern. And it kept coming up. And so I was like, well, let me find out what, what did he actually do? How did the system really mess him over? Well, since it's public record and public information, that's what I did. And then I then I contacted you because I knew that this is something that you uh, understood. And I didn't want to speak out of out of out of pocket or out of turn. Um, and yes, he paid his penalty, Steve. We 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 got that he paid his penalty, but he's the one that's re, he's the one that's reliving and resurrecting this so-called penalty to where it is making him seem to be the the victim. And he's not the victim. The victims are those that he defrauded. The victims are those that he took advantage of. Why being a pastor? Why being a Christian? While now thinking and claiming that God vindicated him, and and I, I just believe that that should be a problem for any of us that is uh, that desires the truth, not perfection, but we should desire consistency from people that we claim that we are supporting and following. Agreed. All right, so uh, let's get to uh, clip number six. Let's go. This is the part. Uh, that really hurt me. When you're doing well, people like you. When you've got money, people like you. When I say we had money, we had money. I could I could take this card. I could buy every last one of you guys on here. Um, I can I can I can buy you. I don't know a microphone. I can buy you a camera. I can I can get you set up with your own YouTube channel. I, I can send you a thousand. We were a millionaire. So he just talked about his history and his past about, you know, the, the money that he made with that. Now, she wanted any, any commentary on that. Just wanted to lay out the context uh, of that. Well, I mean, I, again, I, I understand uh, the trappings of that. Uh, when he, when Corey talked about, you know, feeling myself, I remember as a new lawyer, fresh out of law school, um, good job at a downtown firm. Like I, know the feeling of feeling myself and I know uh, how the pressures of the world 
um, and the pressures of societal pressures and maybe even your own personal uh, pride and, and desire for things and desire for worldly success can, can grapple you. I, I know that feeling. Uh, so I can, I can empathize and sympathize with that. Sure. Um, the, 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 the issue I think that both of us had with this particular statement, and I'm not sure, uh, what, what level Corey was at, uh, at this point in his career, but, uh, the idea that, uh, well, you, you had the money and you had, you had this, uh, Let's get to the other clips, because I think the, the issue yeah. with this is that factually this doesn't make a lot of sense unless this was because you had money that was misappropriated from sure. other uh, clients. Sure, sure. So you want to get to uh, you want to get to the to the plea deal part? Unless you, know? you. No, no, no. Whatever. Yeah. What? Unless, unless you guys have something else to, to no, add. No, I don't. That. I don't. Um, I oh, I did want to add this, though, because um, sure. I mentioned in the previous set about the uh, crimes of moral perturbitude. Um, I wanted to read. Uh, so I got this law dictionary. Here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> almost, every, almost every law student has one of these black law gotcha. dictionaries. Gotcha. Uh, and actually, this is my wife's uh, book. This ain't even mine. <laughs> so <laughs> shout out to her. Uh, so the, the definition of moral perturbitude is conduct that is contrary to justice, honesty, or morality. Uh, moral turpitude means, in general, shameful wickedness so extreme, a departure from ordinary standards of honest, good morals, justice, or ethics as to be shocking to the moral sense of the community. Again, mm -hmm. not relitigating past sins. What we're saying, though, is that uh, the government kind of treats this harshly because of the nature and character of the alleged crimes at hand. And so, again, to your point about they're saying being railroaded by the system and this is on the first offense, all of that, that's all fine and dandy, but there's a reason why they come hard at specifically at certain crimes and especially uh, with crimes related to securities. Um, and so let's just, again, it, it, it's mostly about like, how are you presenting this now? Um, if you've repented of it, you, you've moved past it, okay, fine. But then don't bring it up unprovoked because I, like we said earlier, I didn't, I had no idea until you mentioned it, but don't continue to bring it up as a means of establishing credibility, but then not uh, truthfully represent exactly what, what happened. And like you said, just kind of airing out the selective parts, uh, but leaving out important parts that actually, uh, Kind of substantiate why they may have gone as hard as they did on this particular incident. Right, right, and and that's the concern that I have. I mean, it's like why why this why is this why was this con con constantly and continually being brought up when nobody was discussing his prison his prison state or his prison story. No one. We were asking him why do you make a statement about Eileen Gray and then minimize you know those who have been abused at Grace Community Church and then dismiss you know, Dave, David Collins question, which was a sincere question. So, so sincere that the brother reached out and emailed Corey and Corey still dismissed him. And, and it just makes you, it just makes you wonder. And so then when he does a video, he's talking, he's talking like a victim. He's not talking like a person that basically, Hey, listen to what I did. Boom, boom, boom. No, the Lord, the Lord is going to vindicate me. I, you know, the, I, and you know, I, I, you know, people wanted me to appeal and, and, and I, I did it once, but after that, I didn't, I didn't appeal anymore. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that's not even true. He appealed more than once. Yes, he appealed uh, several times uh, to the point where the appellate court warned him twice uh, that if he kept a, appealing on an issue on this exact same issue that was already decided by the court previously, that they were going to sanction him and, and limit his ability to file any additional appeals in the matter. So that's not true either. Uh, there were there were two attempts to appeal. Uh, we don't have to get into those, uh, but right. those were done. Um, those are in the docket. It is. Uh, this was not. This is not hard. This was not hard to find. Like Seiko was saying earlier, uh, you didn't have to dig very hard. I have a Pacer account. You can get one too. Uh, I've had one since I've been a lawyer. Uh, it's called the Public Access to Court Electronic Records, PACER. 
you can go get you one too and, and you can look at anybody's uh, docket. And to the extent that the case isn't sealed, you can look at those documents. That's part of the open courts provision. Um, that's provided for in the Sixth Amendment of the Constitution. Like this is, this you didn't have to, you didn't have to dig very hard, pay a private investigator and all that kind of stuff. Right. This is just us looking at what happened and reading a few documents and being like, wait a minute, this is not consistent with what we've heard. So him saying that, him saying in a video, in, in, a, in the, not this video, because I'm not sure how many videos he's done now, but in the video regarding him, um, <clears throat> uh, his response to drama, he stated that uh, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't want to, he don't have to defend himself. He wants to be defending himself. God will do that. And, and anytime you defend yourself, is you making it about you. Well, when did you make that statement? I mean, because you were defending yourself and, and I'm not, again, I'm not knocking you doing that, but to say for others to defend themselves when they're being when they're being unjustly slandered or when they're being falsely accused, like people like myself, if I choose to defend myself or if I choose to defend my name and my character because I know the damage that it can cause for others who may hear a lie, like he did with Julie Royce, saying that Julie Roy he, that Julie Royce has an axe to grind against John MacArthur, but then last year says that. He wouldn't care if Julie Royce did have an axe to grind. It doesn't take away from her work and from her research. That's what he said last year in 2022. But now in 2023, he flips and switches. And now he supports MacArthur. And now he's basically uh, distancing himself from Julie Royce and making slanderous comments and statements about her. And that's the problem. And I, and I don't know why anybody else that's a Christian would not see that as a problem. But I do. Because it's about integrity or the lack thereof. And Corey is a he's a he's a he's a he's a Christian. He's a minister of the gospel. He has influence. And so when you make statements like this and unfortunately, people, for the most part, don't discern. They just take what you say instead of being Bereans and doing what God has commanded us to do to test all things and to hold fast that which is true and to abstain from every form of evil. At first, that's long as 521 and 22 says we don't do that. We just basically just say, hey, you know what? Corey said it. That's it. Seiko said it. That's it. Tyron says it. That's it. No, that's not it. There's more to it. We, we must be willing to question. The first person to present his case seems right until another comes along and questions him. And that's what we're doing. And that's why I extended the opportunity for us to have a conversation with, with Corey publicly. He doesn't want to do that. But he has no problem doing that with Pagani, with, uh, with Saldivar, with Marcus Rogers, with the low-hanging fruit, with the heretics. And I'm saying we're your brothers and sisters in Christ. You've made these statements publicly. You made yourself to be the victim. You made yourself out to be the one that being railroaded by the system. And since then, when you have other brothers and sisters like Sister Monica Spencer, who publicly asked him a question, he he, he minimized it. The gaslighting and the and the you know and the the deflecting that that's not that's not a, that's not of God, man. So I believe that we need we have a right to respond to these things and to hold our brother accountable, just like he would hold us accountable. Because I know I know for me, Tarwin, if the shoe was on the other foot, if this were me. On the receiving end of this, this would be without question. Everybody coming from me, and you know what? Rightly so. Yeah. I'm just saying, let's be balanced with this. Let's let's kill the bias and the favoritism, and let's deal with the issue at hand. The issue at hand is that Corey has been making statements on his platform, on his channel, and he has not been telling the truth. Bottom line, he's been lying about it, and he's been making himself out to be the victim, and he's not the victim. He's not. He was not vindicated. If anything, he received mercy, and he didn't have to receive that. Yeah, and uh, what's what's the next clip that you have? It I don't is know if it's uh, about the past. Uh, yeah, about the pastor's recommendation. What he recommended when he heard the case. Okay, maybe we go into that, and then we sure. can let's go on that, and then sure. maybe uh, expound more on the mercy bit because sure. I think that's important. All right, let's go. All that when you have that, people want to talk to you. They want to be your friend. Hey, brother Corey, can you help? Can you this? Can you that? Well. Um, as I'm going before the court and I'm asking, hey, can you all just come and just, just support me? They didn't. It's amazing how trials um, not only show you who you are, but it shows you who they are as well. And what God did was God got rid of everybody who otherwise uh, did, who I would not have gotten rid of. He got rid of them for me, I believe. People who I did not need in my life. Now, I won't tell you who the person is because I've had a couple of different pastors uh, a few, but on the stand, um, he's hearing these things about me. 
Matter of fact, people from the from the from the other church, not the and somebody will say, is it Tony Evans? No, it's not Tony Evans. Um, people from the other church, they hear about this. Um, no, I'm sorry, they haven't heard about it. And he's there as a character witness, but he's hearing all these things that because you know the government is going to say that you're the worst thing since Saddam Hussein and Satan. And so he's hearing these things, and he tells the court, "This is my pastor who said I was like a son to him." And you all are going to be the first people to hear this. I haven't told this story in a while. He tells the judge, Your Honor, um, and that's my character witness, um, hearing these things about him, uh, this is not the Corey Miner that I've, that I've come to know. And so I think the best thing for him, uh, redemption for him, would be for you to give him the maximum amount that the law allowed. Okay. So... Again, so in the previous clip, he made the point about it being the first offense and hoping that that would provide some leniency there. Uh, here's what he was accused of. He was accused of misappropriating customer funds and they uh, for like 64 people. Um, in the lawyer's motion to withdraw from counsel, she mentions that uh, two judges, a magistrate judge, as well as a district court judge, also mentioned the very same thing, that there were 64 victims. The actual information in which he was charged with, so uh, in some jurisdictions, they call it an indictment. Uh, in some, in federal, they call it an information. Uh, in the information, there was only one count. And that one count was for a gentleman who in which he used the U.S. mail in order to send the falsified statement. That was the one count. So when we talk about mercy, here's what, here's what happened. You had a plea agreement that was signed uh, by Corey, and I think we'll get to that maybe in another clip. Seiko, I don't know. Sure, uh, yep, yep. I'll let you kind of next clip guide that discussion. But uh, there was a plea agreement that was signed. Um, that he pled guilty to the one count that was in the information for the one customer that the falsified statement was dropped in the U.S. mail. Um, and that was the one in which he was actually convicted on. However, there were 63 other victims that were alleged by the government. So this is where I think the mercy kind of actually came into play here, is that, and I don't, we actually didn't get a chance to talk about this, Seiko, but why would you even get to the point where you're getting to a plea agreement? I think it was because they were the 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 U.S. attorney who was about to prosecute this case was about to run wild on them mm. and charge him with every last one of them, and they could try to litigate the issues about whether oh I used the courier for the other 63 and that's why they didn't charge me with that, and they were like or we can just charge you with this one, but we're going to go for as much sentencing as we can on it. So it's possible that you could have been charged with a lot more. Uh, so in terms of, again, this is about representing this as if like you were railroaded by the system, when in fact, uh, there might've actually been some uh, mercy exercise in that particular instance by offering this plea agreement as opposed to running wild on the other 64 charges that they may have had you on. So then, what about those who would say, you know, what about the other names that were not mentioned? You know, they should have been mentioned and, and this, that, and the third. I mean, does that have any bearing or credence to anything? Why, why didn't they not list all 63 or 64 names and not just, not just that one? They didn't need to. They only charged him with one and they mentioned his name. I'm not going to mention it here. Yeah, yeah, right, right. When you want to go look it up. You can, but they mentioned the one name that they needed to mention for the charge that uh, he ended up pleading guilty to. Uh, if they ended up charging them with the other victims, uh, they could have named them uh, at that time. Mm. Um, I'll respond to this part because I think there's some people asking what exactly like, do I practice, actually practice uh, <laughs> federal law? Well, uh, sir, yeah, I have. Uh, I don't do criminal law, but I went to law school and I can read. Um, so mm. that's pretty much all I need to know. Um, but feel free to in the chat to tell me or Seiko where we are wrong in terms of our analysis of what is represented in the docket. Well, all right, we were done with clip seven. Let's uh, get to clip eight, sir. 
to the bank. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I was floored. I didn't hear that right. You're telling, you're my former pastor, who was my pastor at the time, my former pastor, um, my mentor, and this guy was, was sh- when I say sharp with the word, sharp with the word, you're telling the court to give me the maximum. The court's looking for any excuse to give me um, any kind of lenient sentence, and you're telling them to give me the maximum. So what did the judge do? Well, if your character witness, this pastor, this guy who says you're like a son to him, gives you, tells you, I should give you the maximum, then I'll give you the maximum. On a pl- No one gets the maximum on a plea deal. Okay, there you go. No one gets the maximum on a plea deal. Let's 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 deal with that. Because people on the outside looking in, people will say, "Hey, that was unfair. That was that was an abuse of uh, of power and justice and, uh, and 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 whatever." I mean, what? Why did they give him the maximum? All right. So this is I'm reading from the document. So this ain't this isn't my opinion. This isn't uh, speculation on my part. This is the exact paragraph. Uh, from a motion that was filed by the public defender that defended him in this uh, in Is terms of how Anders? they got to the sentence. Yeah, so that's a 30-page document on page 10 at the top. Okay. So, yeah. and on the federal level, when you are convicted of a crime and you're looking at sentencing, there are what they call U.S. sentencing guidelines that govern how much time you're actually going to get. Uh, and it's kind of a complicated system, but what essentially what they do is they establish this like base level uh, based on the offense. And then prosecutors can argue for an enhancement of that level number based on other mitigating or other enhancing factors. So the pre-sentence report, I'm reading from page 10 here. Oh, you got it up. All right, here we yeah, go. Yeah, is that the one? The says, pre-sentence uh, the president, re- yes, go, go. Yep, got it. Go yeah, ahead. the pre-sentence report established a base level offense of seven. Uh, I'll skip the uh, sentencing guideline um, references there. Pursuant to blah, 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 an 18 level adjustment was made due to the fact that the loss exceeded two and a half million dollars. So that's number one. The number, the, 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 the volume and scope of the offense uh ended up becoming an enhancement uh to the base level seven pursuant to the sentencing guidelines a four level upward adjustment was assessed because the offense involved 50 or more victims in this case it was 63 all right um another four level adjustment was made because these officer found that the offense involved a violation of securities law again i mentioned it earlier there's a specific uh uh, focus and effort against uh, crimes and white collar crimes, if you will, uh, because white collar crimes uh, involve often involve a lot of money and often involve a lot of manipulation. And so they, there's a particular uh, focus on that, especially as they want to maintain the integrity of the securities market in general. Mm. Uh, the last two, the pursuant, uh, there was another two level adjustment for abuse of trust and a two level adjustment for obstruction of justice. Uh, so those two were actually disputed in this brief, but it didn't matter because the plea agreement was signed, which basically waived any right to dispute any of this. Uh, so the two level adjustment was assessed for obstruction of justice. The pre-sentence officer found that Mr. Minor sent a letters to the victims of the offense under another name and that the letter was an attempt to coerce the victims and to agree into a lighter sentence for his offense. Okay. So, and all this is when he is a Christian. Correct. Someone asked in the chat about what is an Anders brief. Well, an Anders brief is when uh, a uh, when counsel for a defendant wishes to withdraw from their representation of the defendant. Um, in most cases, because uh, there are no once at the conclusion of the matter at the trial level, there are no meritorious issues to bring on appeal. Um, and so the law requires, uh, according to Anders versus California, that you have to file a brief uh, explaining the reasons why you are withdrawing uh, from representation by actually outlining the potential issues that could be brought on appeal and why they are no longer meritorious, meaning that there's nothing to, uh, no issues that can be brought up on appeal. Mm, okay. 
anything else in this document we need to go to or you uh that's all I wanted to read there. Okay. All right. So let's go to uh let's just go to clip number ten. Um clip number nine, he was just saying he was asking God why was this happening to him and why was he doing this to him? Is this one time and all that kind of stuff? But uh we can go to the to the to the tenth clip where he speaks about not being guilty but not being innocent at the same time. Let's go. All the while, I'm thinking I got a chance to win my case because, and here's a little technicality, and it doesn't make me innocent, it just means that I wasn't necessarily totally guilty of the charge, which sounds funny, because when I sent those statements, I sent those statements by a local courier, not a FedEx or UPS, because if they go out of, out of state, then it makes it FedEx, I mean, it makes it a federal case. So I didn't use the U.S. mails and I didn't use FedEx UPS. I used a local courier and had the statement from them, an affidavit signed from them, and also an affidavit from my attorney saying that she didn't investigate. Of course, she turned around and, re and rescinded that. But I'm thinking I've got a shot to get my, my case should be tossed out. I have hope on that. Okay. I'll let you go first. I'm actually looking up something. Here. Yeah, well, the mail fraud thing, I mean... Um, I to say that you're not guilty and to say that you're not necessarily innocent, that's that's double speak. Um, that's like saying you're a little bit pregnant, you're a little bit not. That's like saying you're a little bit of a male, you're a little bit of a not. Which which one are you? The proof is in the proof is in what we see. And so if we have the court documents and have the have the court statements, which he signed, um, and it was not by force, it was not by coercion, it was not by any promises made. Uh he said he he was he was he was cognitively uh, able in his right mind, sound mind and reason to to sign these statements. He did it based on the court documents, based on the court records that I just obtained. Um, what other reason would I say that you were not guilty or you were not innocent? Either, either you pled guilty because you were, you said that you were in, in, in your own testimony. So then why would you say that you were not because you're talking about it being, it wasn't necessarily mail fraud? Well, that's not what the, that's not what the court said. That's not what the law stated. And along those lines, uh, again, and I know he's kind of speaking very cavalierly here, so I'm not trying to hold uh, this to Corey as if this is something he believes now, uh, but because this, this video was made a little over a year ago. Uh, however, um, to just say, well, you know, a technicality, uh, given the level of uh, victims in this crime and 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 the effect that it has on not only them, but uh, others as well. In, in other words, this wasn't a victimless crime. Um, I'm going to read from page 11 uh, here uh, because someone in the comments mentioned something about like uh, victim, uh, was it some victim statement or something like that. Uh, at the sentencing hearing, several investors gave statements about the devastating losses they incurred through their investments, investments with Mr. Minor. And this is to his credit, so listen up, because again, we're not, we're just reading from the documents here. Mr. Minor also testified and expressed great remorse and sorrow for his actions. Praise God for that, right? Uh, but at the same time, we can have a godly sorrow and a godly repentance, but then turn around and still need to face the consequences of things that we, we've done. So I think the issue that we're having is how it's being represented today versus what actually happened. And it's not merely just the victims of the crime. There were employees that worked in the uh, branch of the investment firm that Corey ran who were probably also affected by this too. Uh, and so I think it's just a little bit disingenuous to just kind of say, well, you know, I get off on this technicality and then just kind of go about as if uh, there wasn't a lot of deliberation that went into what actually occurred here. And one other point is I know, you know, there is a history in this country, and I'm not, uh, I'm not unaware of this, of mistreatment at the hands of the courts. Uh, that there hasn't been racial bias, right. particularly with juries and things like that. And that's not something that we're unaware of or not considering. And I, but I also know that that colors a lot of what people believe uh, when it comes to the court system. And so, it's, you know, someone says that they've been railroaded, it's very easy to kind of be on that side. Right. But then it's like, well, why, what do all these people have an interest in railroading you for when document after document continues to 
express, number one, to lay out the facts of what happened, and number two, to lay out the reasons why they went with the sentence that they went with. Mm -hmm. um, like they, they didn't come to this merely by saying, oh, we don't like this joker, we gonna go blah, 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 blah. You can't read into the hearts of the prosecutors, the pre-sentencing officer, the, the, the various judges that uh, ruled on this case in various manners at various points in different times, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals and the, the judges who reviewed the records and made their own decisions they even sent the uh, one uh, issue that he argued back down to the trial judge to consider. So it, there's way too many people working at way too many different points of time to make the allegation that this was merely like being steamrolled by the system. And especially when you consider the scope and nature of the the crimes. I wanted to ask one, one, one question though, Tarwin, because Again, sure. somebody, somebody still want to know why did he get the maximum sentence? Uh, if his pastor did not say that, is it possible for him not to have received the maximum sentence of 240 months? Well, his pastor didn't really have, I, I don't think that, so victim statements, you know, it's not to say that they don't have an impact. Uh, oftentimes, though, it's it, it can be merely ceremonial, meaning that the decision is kind of already made what that sentence is going to be, uh, mm -hmm. especially like in federal court and especially when you've got someone who's signed a plea agreement. Uh, there's no jury involved. Uh, you've already signed a plea agreement. You pled guilty to the to the one count. Um, and so essentially the victim statements are kind of a public way of uh, highlighting the impact that's been made. It's sometimes used that it's kind of meant to be a deterrent. Uh, it's also helps the judge in sort of the subjective part of the sentencing part. But mm -hmm. in federal court, a lot of the sentencing is, is, is already kind of established through the guidelines. So to the extent that uh, a prosecutor can successfully argue for enhancements, um, you won't find very many instances where there's gonna be a significant departure from the guidelines downward just because of a uh, exceptionally impactful victim statement. The reality is, is that the prosecution uh, was going to, uh, the, the adjustments that I read about earlier, they were already there. So he was facing 210 to 240 months anyway, regardless of what the pastor said on the stand. Mm, okay. So it wasn't necessarily the pastor being, being put out there publicly as it, it was, you know, his fault, or it would have been a change of, uh, the tide would have changed or shifted had he had spoke uh, in his in his defense. But let me say this, then that would have, I believe, if he would have tried to help him to lessen the the punishment, then Galatians 6, 7 and Ephesians 5, 11 would have been in violation, have nothing to do with the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but expose them. And then do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. So sometimes what we sow, we sow more than we sow. <laughs> I mean, that one little kernel of grain or whatever we put into the ground is going to heap a crop and we don't never complain about the crop when it's a good thing. But when it comes to us on a negative downslope, on a negative aspect, then that's when we we uh, see the quote-unquote injustice. And, and I'm, I'm just speaking for my, myself as well, too, because all of us can fall into any of these kinds of things. But what we cannot do sure. is make ourselves to be a victim, make ourselves to be innocent, or to, to, minim, or to mind screw and gaslight our supporters and followers all because... We, you know, I think because we can, I mean, because look at, look at people in the, in the comments. Now there are people in the comments that are not even listening to the facts. They're going on feelings and mainly most of them are women, which I, which I'm not surprised, which I'm not surprised, but that doesn't mean the women don't have the Holy spirit. You still have the Holy spirit of God. So what is the spirit of God supposed to be teaching you? We're not to, we're not to respond emotionally over clear facts. And so now we're presenting biblical principles along with the law. You know, saying you have a pastor and a lawyer here, two sides of this situation. We're trying to uh, we're trying to approach it to help you, the viewer, you, the, the the individuals who are following channels. And just because we say things, but if we don't support what we say by by the word of God, then we we're just we're we're no different in the world. We're no different than the world, and we can't talk about false teachers. We can't talk about heretics. We can't talk about again the low hanging fruit. When we got those that are in lofty positions. In our own in our own tree, 
that we can't touch. They're, they're the forbidden fruit. They're not even, they're not the low hanging fruit. They're the forbidden fruit. You can't say anything. You can't talk about, you can't touch them. You can't even, you can't say anything in their direction without incurring some type of, you know, um, public, uh, disapproval and iron from, from, uh, from those who follow and support them. And it shouldn't be that way in, in the body of Christ. But I wanted to make sure we put that out there because there's a lot of people who would think, well, you know, the pastor should have spoke on Corey's behalf. Well, no, the pastor should not have if, 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 if what this man was hearing was what was done. And how sometimes we learn our lesson. We learn our lesson by being being left to our own, you know, to our own devices and our own consequences. So this is not, again, this is not us trying to tear this brother down. We if he if he would not kept if he not keep mentioning this stuff as him being the victim, I mean, this is what he just mentioned uh a, a couple of days ago in response to a statement that he made regarding Eileen Gray and Grace Community Church. And he flipped it. He flipped the entire narrative to make himself seem to be the victim, saying that people were attacking him. Nobody is attacking this brother. Nobody. You're being held accountable for what you say. And now you don't like it. You know, when it was my when, when it was my head on the on the on the on the on the, uh, on the slab, unrightly, unjustly, people had no problem. Nobody was speaking in my defense. You know, saying Corey didn't say much. She didn't say anything much at all. But now we're saying, listen, brother, this is clear sin. This is not this is not an issue of preference. You are going around making statements that are not true. You're lying. You're lying. And you got to stop that. You're not the victim here. And that's and that's the point I want people to understand. You're not the victim. God did not vindicate Corey. If y'all don't hear anything else, this was not vindication. This was not. This was mercy and only mercy. And so for him to even turn that what God actually did and he didn't have that he didn't have to do because vindication is something that God does for you because you are innocent, because you are righteous. But you weren't when you were in prison. You received mercy. You got something that you did not deserve. You were getting something that God was not obligated to give you. And then you flip it around and take God's mercy and call it vindication as though you're supposed to have gotten vindicated as you, you don't belong here. No, you did. Yes, you did. And I'll be the first to say that, even if I'm the only one to say that. Yeah. But anyway, next clip or what? Yeah. what and you want? well, and Go ahead. but the other thing to that point is, if it, uh, if you thought that, and I know there's some dispute that he had with his own attorney, and, and maybe we'll get to that in a moment. But sure, uh, you know, you you basically, on the one hand, you sign the plea agreement, right? Right. And there is an entire process that you go through before that plea agreement is confirmed. A lot of people, and again, kind of to your point about emotionalism being involved, you think that, well, all right, you got coerced to sign some plea agreement. You know, people kind of think that what that means is they walked in the door, they said, hey, man, here's your agreement right here. Just sign right here. Boom. And then they just hauled you off. And that was it. Like there was an entire process where you have to publicly state and publicly affirm not only that you agree to it, but that you that every element of that agreement is then read out and laid out before you for you to affirm. So you're making miniature covenants all along the way as you uh, affirm this plea agreement. So why would you sign that, but then say that you're factually innocent? It's double-minded. Yes. And it's an offense. It is definitely offensive to even to even to even make those kinds of statements as though you're the one that's the that's the victim here, um, and that's the yeah. thing that I just find disappointing, man. I, I really do. So, uh, but he gets he, we got two more clips, and then we go to this, his other video where we highlight some All other right. things. Uh, but this is where he says that uh, that God can trust him. I can testify what he's done for me because if he gave me one year and I got out, I'd be the same. But faith in the getting through part. It's the being with him while you're going through it. Are you with me? So no faith doesn't protect you from COVID. You can think it is. You can think it does. And then once you get it, then what happens to your faith? You can know faith doesn't keep you from losing money because when you do, now what happens to your faith? Your faith can't be based on the things that God gives you. It has to be based on God, who you can have. I don't know if anybody's hearing this, but if you want 2022 to be successful spiritually, you need to just focus on God and whatever you give me, God, I don't care what it is. And I mean, mean it because we say it, 
We're good at saying it. You know, what they say, a pair of lips will say anything. We're good at saying it, but will you mean it? One thing I can say, the one thing the Lord can testify on me, God can testify on my behalf is that no matter how bad it got, I still, I still trust him. And I'm laying in my bunk bed in prison. And when that lady called my name, tell me that you're going home. We need your wife's address and phone number because we're getting ready to get you up out of here. And I had time left. You can't tell me. You can't tell me what God won't do. You can't sell me on anything. I know who brought me to the dance and who's taking me home. Amen. I got to respond to this one. Um, because beside the tears, this is where I got, I got kind of angry about this. In light of what I know, in light of what I know to be true. You weren't innocent at all. First Peter, I read it earlier at the beginning of this live. First Peter chapter two, verse 20 reads this. For what credit is there? What credit is there if when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with, pray, with, with patience? But if when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God. Let me go to let me go to chapter four again of Peter, verse 15 through 17 again. For those who are just coming in and thinking that I'm just trying to, you know, dog this, but I'm not dogging this brother at all. Verse, verse 15. Make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or thief or evildoer or troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, as a Christian, a disciple of Christ, a Christ follower, he is not to be ashamed. Corey didn't go to prison because he was a Christian. Corey went to prison because he was a crook. That's why he went to prison. He says, but if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed, but is to glorify God in this name. So why, why are we, let me go to one more. Let me go to one more because I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask this question. Why are we acting as though the victim is Corey when he's not the victim here? And people are mad because we're talking about something that Corey brought up. We didn't bring this up. We're responding to what Corey brought up because what Corey was bringing up was not fully true. No, sir. No, sir, Craig. That was not the only thing that he was being quote unquote thankful for. He said God can trust him. Trust him how? With what why? What? What are you what are you talking about? Verse 8 of 1 Timothy 1. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, realizing the fact that law is not made for a righteous person. Not made for a righteous person, but for those who are lawless and rebellious, for the ungodly, for and sinners for the unholy and profane, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers and immoral men and homosexuals and kidnappers and liars and perjurers and whatever else is contrary to sound teaching. So this is, again, people talking about let this go, let this go. Well, why, why are y'all here? Nobody, nobody, nobody sent for y'all. Nobody summoned y'all to be here. We're responding just like Corey would respond to uh, heretics and their comments and their statements. I'm responding to a brother who's making who's making uh, hypocritical and uh, untrue statements. So again, God can trust Corey with with what with with what with what. Now, I I pray. That he has learned his lesson. But I would think if I've learned my lesson, Brother Tarwin, I would not be repeating something that's a lie. And making myself to be the victim or making myself to be innocent. You were not innocent, brother. You were not innocent. Yeah. You were not. And you weren't railroaded by the system. Uh, and I think he didn't say those specific words, but I think the whole of the recounting of all of this is just kind of well i endured some suffering right. as a result of the system and it's it's not true and again it's because there is an entire process that he went through where he affirmed stuff i'm going to read now uh, sure yeah please uh again i don't want we didn't want this to be just our thoughts and, and, and our uh, 
interpretations and opinions about what happened. Here's what I'm on the 13 page document, by the way. All right, uh, let's brother, go there. Let's go. Uh, starting at the bottom of page three of that document. Um, right. And the term movement is actually referring to uh, Mr. Minor in this case. So I'll just kind of refer to him as I read it this Under way. Under pre-indictment so, or sufficiency of charging? You on the 13 page document? Oh, the 13 page, okay, hold on, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the, it should be page three. Three, three, okay, gotcha. The bottom two, of the 13 page document. All right, gotcha, gotcha. Let me know if you got it up. You got yep, it? Yep, I got okay. it, yep. So this is related to the plea deal that was signed and the hearing that happened as a result of the plea deal. Uh, Mr. Minor appeared before the U.S. Magistrate Judge on March 22nd, where the court advised him of his rights to remain silent, to have legal counsel appointed, to plead not guilty, and to have a trial by jury. Uh, Mr. Minor retained legal counsel and indicated he was satisfied with his representation. Mr. Minor stated that he's understood the elements of the offense of mail fraud outlined by the court, the minimum and maximum penalties, and the items he was forfeiting. Uh, the sentencing guidelines were explained to Mr. Minor. He stated that he understood, one, that the guidelines are discretionary and are not binding, and two, he was giving up his right to, of appeal and right to file any post-conviction proceedings except for those issues listed as reservations in his plea agreement waiver. Mr. Minor confirmed that it was his signature on the plea agreement and that he had read it over and fully understood it before signing. Mr. Minor then stated that no promises, forces, or threats had been made to force him to plead guilty, that he had considered the consequences of his guilty plea, and that he entered into the plea freely and voluntarily. Formal declarations in open court carry with them a strong presumption of truth. Uh, I'll skip these uh, court recitations here. After stating that he was not taking any medication or under the care of a doctor at, at the time, Mr. Minor stated that he understood he was pleading guilty to a felony, which means he's given up his right to vote, right to possess an arm, right to hold public office, right to serve on the jury. He also confirmed, this is the last statement in the paragraph, he also confirmed that everything stated in the factual statement was true. Mm. So again, it, what, what is inconsistent then is this representation that uh, you were basically suffering at the hands of the system for a crime that you believe you were factually and actually innocent of, yet you signed and affirmed, not only signed in the presence, read the statement and signed it, but then had to go back into open court before a judge and affirm everything voluntarily. And you did so. So to that extent, you didn't suffer at the hands of the system. And even though there were several appeals made later to try to, to basically argue the technicality, the problem was, was that you assigned something previously that you covenanted to, that you had waived that right to appeal any other issues involved in it. Mm -hmm. But then it kind of goes down to, well, so was there a miscarriage of justice? And was there some fact that would have exonerated you on a mail fraud claim? Uh, not on the one count that they did get you on, no. So then, what about? I don't know. Are we are we moving too far ahead? Uh, with what am I about to say? The um. Okay, so we have the. Let me let me clear this up for a second. So we have this statement here. I don't know if we want to get to the the portion where his public defender, uh, she removes herself from the case. Uh, because she calls it a Ponzi scheme. Is that is that the statement that she made? Yeah. Know? So on the thirty page document at the uh, page twenty three, okay, at the me top, go, let me go there. Um, page now, three. You know, yes, page twenty three. Now, in fairness, let me just say that the context of this statement specifically is she's arguing that the enhancement of the sentence for abuse of trust was was wrong, with that that was a wrong decision by the court uh, because they hadn't done that in previous uh, cases uh, involving Ponzi schemes. So she's sort of arguing this in order to support her argument, but it's still pretty significant that his own attorney describes it as such. So she says this, 
Uh, Mr. Minor ran what may be most appropriately described as a Ponzi scheme. It is undisputed that he misled the investors about the investments and basically defrauded them of their money. Uh, this is, in fact, mail fraud. I should have mentioned this earlier, but this is the exact same uh, statute that got uh, Charles Ponzi convicted, uh, where we get Ponzi scheme from. Mm. Uh, Bernie Madoff was convicted uh, for this exact same thing and for way more counts. And uh, most recently, uh, Felicity Huffman was convicted of mail fraud in that USC, uh, what was that, that admissions scandal where her and that other actress were falsifying yeah. records and sending yeah. it to the university to get their daughters in USC. Mm -hmm. um, somebody wanted to ask the question. They said, what, is, what does movement mean? Who is movement? Movement. So in that document, uh, movement was uh, Corey. So he was the one that initiated the uh, motion in the court uh, to reconsider the uh, conviction. Okay. All right. All right. So let's go on. Uh, Bernie made off, made off. Somebody, That's I knew right. someone was going to make yeah, that. Yeah, I, I was going to say that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Proverbs had it right as well. Yeah, move, movement is, is Corey. Yes. So, uh, yeah. all right. Uh, let's go on to uh, to the last portion of the uh, of this particular video here. I yep. want you to see the passage. He says uh, in Galatians 6, 9, and let us not grow weary in doing good for in due season. In due season, if we do not give up, we will reap if we do not give up. In due season. Guys, what that means is not when you think it's your time for the season, not when you think it's time, but in, in due season, in his season, when he knows you're ready, you shall reap your reward. Is it going to be a car? Probably not. Is it going to be a new husband or new wife? Maybe. Is it going to be all your bills paid? I don't know. But you know, whatever you're going to reap, you know whose hand it's going to be attached to, it's going to be attached to him. So do this for yourself. Be faithful and mean it and watch 2022 be a blessing for you. Amen. So um, again, just go to first, go to first Peter 2.20, read that in this context. Uh, the context is dealing with suffering as a Christian. Um, and Peter asked a rhetorical question. What good is it if you suffer for doing, you know, doing, doing wrong and you, and you endure it? There's no, God gets no glory out of that. And then he says in that same chapter, in that same book, in the fourth chapter, verse 15 through 17, let none of us be named as a thief or a murderer, a, a, a perjurer, any of those things. As a Christian, we're not, we're not to be named as that. So him quoting Galatians 6, 9, bro. And for a brother who knows the languages, who knows Hebrew and Greek, that he knows better than that. I mean, that's manipulation. I don't, I don't care what anyone says about this. You did not reap for doing good. You are reaping what you sown because you did wrong. That's Galatians 6, 7. That ain't Galatians 6, 9, Corey. And the sad thing about it is if you read the if you if you just read the comments T, if you read those comments in that video, you got people putting up hand emojis, crying, and all because they didn't. I mean, now I'm just saying, hopefully now looking back at this and saying, well, wait a minute. We were taken, we were, we were taken. We were taken. You were emotionally mind screwed by the scriptures. Because if the premise was, I sinned, I earned every consequence that I did, I don't control the consequences, this is, this, this, God was dealing with me. Yeah, he mentioned that earlier, but he still came out as being the victim. I, I, I don't want people to, to miss this, because that is important. Because now that flies in the face of 1 Peter 2.20. I'm not saying this. God is saying this. What good is it if you claim to belong to me, but you do wrong and you endure it? I get no glory out of that. And then you invoke God's name saying that he can trust you. Then you then you cite Galatians 6, 9 and saying, don't grow weary in doing good 
For in due season, you will, you will reap if you don't faint. Brother, that don't apply to you. What applies to Corey is, be merciful to me, O God. Psalm 51 applies to him and to us when we sin and God is dealing with us. It's, it applies to any of us. Psalm 32, Psalm 38 applies to us. Not these texts that he's citing. Yeah. These texts cite to those who are doing what's right for people who are walking in their integrity. Proverbs 19, 1, Proverbs 20, verse 7, Proverbs 28. That, that's what those texts apply to, but it don't apply to, to, to any of us if we're if we're lying and manipulating and trying to make ourselves to be the, the, the victim. And then we lie about appeals that we filed and saying that I, I, I let God, I, I let God defend me. Um, I, I only filed one appeal, maybe two. And then when, this, when the people came with the second time saying I should apply it, I should, I should appeal. I took it and just threw it away. Did that happen according to court documents and court records, uh, Tara? No. Then let's, 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 let's get to it then. Let's get to the next video. This is where he's talking about being vindicated. This is this is the uh, the recent video that he made on uh, my response to to drama. Let's go. During this time, and it's just me and God. I did have my Bible, so I, I could I could read, but it's just me and God. Well, I get a letter. The letter says the letter came from the United States Court of Appeals said that your appeal appeal had been denied. Two to one, I believe it was the was the. Uh, <laughs> Two to one is was the ruling. And so it was possible, as a matter of fact, even advisable that I would go ahead and file um, citing new evidence to have the whole thing tossed out. On his face, everyone said, you should win. What did I do? I said at that moment, you know what? No, I'm not filing anything. At that moment, and this was about six, seven years left on my sentence. No, God. Toss it away threw it away. It's in your hands. Lord, as the psalmist says, you vindicate me. As a matter of fact, when we look at that passage to Psalms 26, 1, it says, vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. And here it is. Examine me, O Lord, and try me. Test my mind and my heart for your loving kindness is before my eyes and I have walked in your truth. You can only really pray that prayer if you have been walking with the Lord. Now, can I tell you what happened? This was 2019 that I'm in the shoe. 2019. I'm in the shoe and I get that and I decided, no, Lord, I'm putting it in your hands. I had no idea what was going to happen. Less than one year later, I am released. Five years prior to my actual release date. So this is where, you know, trusting, I can at least say so, that trusting in the Lord absolutely wait, works. He says in Galatians 6, don't be weary in doing good for in due season at the appointed time, you shall reap a reward. That is, if you do not faint. So keep doing what you're supposed to do. Do not faint. God will, if you want him to, if you let him, he will vindicate you. Again. How, how is this vindication? Biblically, how, how, is it, how is it vindication biblically or legally? I'm, I'm, I'm asking when you committed a crime, you admitted to the crime, you signed court documents over and over again, you admitted it, you, 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 you know, supposedly expressed some type of remorse before the witnesses. You didn't take it to trial because you knew going to trial would probably be worse. So you plead, plead it out again. I'm, I'm trying to understand this is this is not two years ago, y'all. This is a couple of days ago. This video was made. My response right. to and, drama. Right. So and, and so the, the the implication here is that you know at least as recently as a couple of days ago, you still believe it to be yourself to be factually innocent. Uh, and as someone mentioned in the chat, what what about the victims of the investors who lost their money? What vindication do they get? Amen. Uh, you know, what restitution do they get? Uh, do they just have to go on with life without what was taken from them? I mean, that, these are serious, and that's why I meant like this is a, it's it's very serious. Uh, and so, 
for this to be spun into a narrative of vindication, it, that's what's troubling. And again, we're not, this is a plea, like brother, brother, please, um, you know, as, as you mentioned earlier, um, be reconciled, Lord, like repent from this and just turn from this. Uh, you ain't got to mention this anymore. I mean, that, that's where I was. I, this has, Corey has done so many edifying videos, uh, so many edifying videos. Like you said, he's sharp with the word. He knows it. And I love Corey's demeanor. And so I hate that this is sort of being put out there for whatever reason um, and framed in a way that's just not consistent with the truth. Uh, and that's, that is the concern here, not the actual acts. I mean, the acts are concerning too, but he's repented from that. So, right, hey, right. it's forgiven in Christ. We ain't, we ain't got nothing to do with that either. It's what's being framed and the way it's being framed now, which is inconsistent with the truth. And scripture calls that lying. So what do you say to people, you know, like, um, like AT, he says this, I know people that have been victim of a Ponzi scheme and I almost was once, once too. So that's not cool. I mean, so he, 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 he resonates, this resonates. So, you, you know, you, you, so when you hear people like Corey make these comments, it's, it's an offense to people who had probably trusted in you. And I'm not sure if these were Christians because his name was, 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 you know, a uh, uh, minor Christ. Was it, was it called, what was his uh, investment? Firm name, I forgot the Christ name. Christ Minor Investments. Christ Minor Christ Investments. Minor Investments. Yeah. Right. So you have you, you have the name of Christ added to your business, but not not acting Christ like, you know, in, in that. So yeah. I, I just, you know, again, people people gonna act as though we're trying to um we're trying to drum up this stuff. No, we're responding to this. That's I mean, again. We would not have said, I know I wouldn't have said anything. You definitely wouldn't because you wouldn't, you didn't know anything about this. I, I, I contacted you because I said, man, I need, I need legal eyes on this because I need, I need this thing to be broken down and, you know, bring the cookies down from the top so everybody can get a bite of this thing because this is, this is from what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing are two different things. And I know that the average viewer is not, is not able to, 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 to realize this or even have seen this as well. And so right. I understand the pushback. But the pushback is, I believe the pushback is not because of the facts. It's because of the figure. No. It's because of the figurehead. Yeah. 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 And one claim that he made in that clip was that, uh, and I, I wasn't sure because he kind of skipped around a little bit, but he was saying that in 2019, at least, uh, he had foregone any further appeal mm -hmm. uh, of the issues. I don't know. Did you hear that part too? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So, but. And I think I shared this with you, but uh, in, there was a Fifth Circuit decision that came down in 2019 uh, where they denied uh, Corey's motion to file a second motion under a USC Section 2255. I got uh, it up on the screen. Which school. essentially he was in. You got it up? Okay. Uh, where he was intending to uh, file a second motion in order to uh re uh bring up some issues uh i think factual issues actually mm -hmm. uh that were not presented at the trial level because he signed a plea agreement and this was ruled you see at the top of the screen or you may see it i can't really see it but I, the date filed was that this decision was filed was october 31st of 2019 and the very last sentence on page two uh the court basically has warned him uh, uh, filing any further proceedings where he's basically raising the same issue. I'll read it. It says, moreover, because Minor raises claims that were raised in his first 2255 proceedings, which the court denied, he is warned that frivolous, repetitive, or abusive filings will result in the imposition of sanctions, which may include dismissal, monetary sanctions, and restrictions on his ability to file pleadings in this court and any court subject to this court's jurisdiction. Uh, so, this is this kind of opinion and this kind of statement from the court is really serious because they basically are saying like, "Hey, man, don't come back in here with this." Wow. Uh, we've already ruled on this. Wow. Uh, they don't make statements like that unless they're trying to make a point. So, 
his his testimony on these videos saying that he he didn't he didn't he appeal he didn't make any more appeals he just trusted God that's a lie. Now he might have filed that appeal much earlier in the year. It does take time for the court to actually rule on it. But I think the point that's made here is you're saying that you had given it up, but at least in your mind you are still willing and ready to continue to file as long as the opportunity was still there. Right. Uh, maybe you did give it up, but you must have given it up after you filed a second uh, appeal on the exact same issue that was denied the first time. Mm. Okay. So then again, it brings us back to, to the, to the whole issue. Um, no one is saying that he, he shouldn't have appealed or he shouldn't have tried to, you know, I'm not, that's not the issue. The issue is don't tell people that if they defend themselves, because that's exactly what he did, that it's all about them. Well, was this all about you when you were doing it? So much so that the courts basically had to go like like Pinky on Friday? Do it again. Do it again. Appeal one more time. Do, do, do it again. I mean, is, is, is it did it have to get to that point? So I'm just asking, why is it why is it okay for him, but it's not okay for other people? when their livelihood is on the line and they did nothing wrong. I mean, I remember last I remember last year when we had our panel discussion and things like that. You know, he was talking about not for me not defending myself. I'm like, well bro, can you open your mouth? Can can y'all can y'all come to my aid? I mean if I'm getting shot at and you telling me to stand down, well why? Why should I stand down if you're not gonna stand up for me? And so now it's making so, sense. Yeah, but I would say that uh, there is an issue with defending yourself at this point after Absolutely. you signed an agreement and covenanted not to appeal as a condition of the plea. Uh, it, it, you're going back basically on your word. And again, all of this is happening, as we established earlier on in this live, as a believer. Right. And so, again, uh, not relitigating that. Uh, I'm almost positive that he's he would say I'm repentant and I believe that. Right. Right. But it's how it's currently being framed that's an issue. It's inconsistent with the truth. And so you'd be better off just not mentioning it if that's the only way in which you can frame this, because that's just not what not what we have here. Right. Exactly. All right. Well, let's go on to the next clip. Um I believe he talks about, you know, letting the Lord uh, defend you. Here's the next one. And that's it. That's the, that's the secret, guys. If you if you know and only, you know, better than anyone else, if you've been walking in him, only, you know, how you have behaved, how you have spent time with him. And so it's really kind of a test. Try me. Examine me, as he says, and see. But how does he start off by saying what's the first thing he says? He says, vindicate me, O Lord. I do want relief. So when you let the Lord defend you, it's not saying that you don't want to, to get any relief, that you want to take whatever comes. That's not the point. It's not give me it all because you don't have the ability to take all that can be given to you or put on your shoulders. But what you're doing is you're saying, Lord, if I'm wrong, you'll deal with me. If I'm right, you'll release me, however it is. So how does that be? How is that being spun? He was definitely wrong. But again, he received mercy. It was he was not in there unjustly. He was not in there because the feds had nothing else to do and they were they were playing, you know, criminal roulette and your name came up. That, that wasn't that wasn't the case. Neither is that the narrative. Um, I believe it had been a, a better testimony if he had admitted to all the stuff that he did and kept the statement consistent and said, I didn't deserve to get out, but God showed me mercy. Never would have used vindication. I would have never said vindication. I was I say vindication when I know I'm 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 falsely accused and unjustly treated, as the scripture says. But again, he's now spinning it and making it seem and sound like, yeah, when you let the Lord defend you, why would he why would the why would the Lord defend you when you dishonored him? God is under no obligation. And and we were listening to that in a sermon today at church this morning. The pastor was saying, you know. Uh, uh, sometimes we don't get our prayers answered because we're in a rebellion. We're in, we're in, we're in rebellion. We're, we're living in sin, and we think God is obligated to, to hear our prayer. We think God is obligated to, to listen to us. No, 
if I regard iniquity in my heart, the psalmist says, God will not hear me. So then why would I why would I presuppose that God is going to defend me when I'm now coming out? I mean, now you're out of prison. I mean, you're out. Why spend this as though you are the victim or as though you're the one that was vindicated for something for crimes that you did not commit when we know that that is not true? Yeah. So, um, and there was one thing I wanted us to talk about and highlight before we end this. We got a few more uh, clips to, to mention, but I want us to make sure we talk about the amount because people are talking about this amount that that was that was embezzled, you know, and and and, and is, he, is he paying this back? What was the charge? What was the order? What was he restituted to pay? What was the restitution amount to uh, to pay back? I think we need to you know uh, address that before we end this uh, in the in the live. Yeah. Um... I got to flip the documents up. So I think the, I, I'll just use an estimate uh, or a rounded off number. I'm not, I don't know the exact number. Uh, I think it's on page, it was uh, two it's point. on the first page, the first page I got. Okay. So I'll pull that up. But page 13. the court found that the total actual, like uh, the actual loss as a result of the scheme was upwards of 3 million bucks. But I think yeah. the restitution amount was like 2.8. Yeah, 2.8, cents in restitution. Yeah, yeah, that's the amount. Yeah. And so the question people are asking is, is, is he is he ordered to pay that back? Um, based on the court document, so, we're asking about here. Yeah, at least based on the court documents, yes, that that was part of the order. Uh, what would what might actually happen? Uh, that I'm unsure of. I right. mean, it. it in theory, yes, you owe it, uh, but you know it's just like I mean, Madoff owed it, but uh, he's dead, so right, you won't be able to pay it back. So I, I think it's it sort of stands out there, but mm -hmm. the actual enforcement of it kind of varies from from defendant to defendant. So I don't I don't want to speak yeah, on gotcha, that. Gotcha. And it's also possible that uh, some of that may have been relieved through that First Step Act. Uh, that Trump signed back in uh, 2019 too. So okay. uh, I don't know enough about that to say what would happen. Sure. But, sure. you know, like what we were mentioned, talking about the other day, uh, you know, what kind of example do we find from someone like Zacchaeus? Uh, right. I mean, I would say that that's at least instructive in this matter, but I'm not going to say that that applies here. Sure. Uh, Just the principle yeah. I was talking about, yeah. Yeah, but at least the principle. Right. And I'm sure if, uh, you know, if the brother could now, he would. But I also know that he made public statements about public repentance is not is not required for public sin. But then last year, you said that MacArthur is required to publicly repent because he's a public figure. And, and, and see, so these are the inconsistencies yeah. that we're talking about. We're not we're not the ones that are trying to trying to dig this out. He's making these statements and then he's flipping and making opposite of what he's made before and you're confusing your viewers you're confusing the body of christ and and most importantly you're really confusing those who are naive and those who disbelieve whatever whatever you say because after all you know your core minor you're the smart christians channel you know you're soft-spoken things of that nature you're not you're not you're not bombastic like i am because again if it were me saying this kind of stuff we know it's to be a different spin it'd be a totally different treatment um but again that's not what the word of god the word of God, all of us are, are to be dealt with equally according to the scriptures. We're not to be saving face and we're not to show partiality. So that's how we're supposed to do that. He talks about defending the gospel in this next clip. You ready to play this one? Ready. All right. Does that mean that you never, ever, ever defend yourself? No. Does it mean you never, ever speak a word? No, that's not the case because we see that. Most often, though, the pattern that we see of even Jesus or the disciples the apostles, we don't see them defending themselves a lot. We do see there are times when they do. They do so for the sake of the gospel. At some point in time, you might, I might have to, might not, who knows. But the first response, the, the, the automatic response would be, Lord, you take this. And depending upon your walk with him, you might understand, you might be moved to go ahead and make a defense. But you make your defense not of yourself, you make your defense of the word and why you say or why you do what you do as it relates to the word, not for defending yourself. 
There's nothing worthy about you that requires you to be defended. We're no good. There's nothing special about us. But his word, uh, that's different, which is why we, we will always defend doctrine. We'll always defend the word of God. But to get up and defend yourself, now it becomes about you. And I just don't want to do that uh, because thus far I've tried to make it about him and I'm still home today. While there's still a year, two years, I'm sorry, left on my imprisonment. But I'm here because guess what? God can vindicate you if he so chooses, but he'll only do so if you are walking with him. So I hope this has been helpful. He and I were having the conversation and I said, you know what? This might be something that somebody else might get some benefit from. Might not be a lot. Hopefully it will be, but hopefully you can see I'm living, I'm a living example, living proof of trusting in him, letting him handle it first. Works a lot. It really does. Amen. Um, Proverbs asked this question. I'm putting it on the screen in case you didn't see it yet. He says, uh, based on Corey's testimony and your review of the court documents, did he downplay the amount he actually stole? Um, no, he didn't downplay it, but he disputed the amount. Uh, I think that he was saying that he there were disbursements that were made to uh, some of the customers that he had defrauded uh, that weren't accounted for. But uh, and I lost the I should have bookmarked that part. There was a part in one of the documents that actually covers that, and they asked him for those statements and they weren't provided. Right. And not only this court, but also the uh, FINRA. So the financial, the, the organization that uh, regulates uh, securities traders asked for those statements as well. Um, and they weren't provided for whatever reason. Um, and so uh, I don't think he like knowingly downplayed. I think he disputed the amounts, but was unable to prove that there was should have been a lesser amount of restitution than what the court ordered. Right. And, and once again, you heard in this video, and this was the last clip of the video for him and the, uh, the vindication. He keeps saying vindicate, God will vindicate, God will vindicate me. And he's putting that for himself. So what, what, I guess my question for you is what message does that send? If you are, if you, if you were not privy to these documents that you have now that we, that we've been reviewing, right? How would you walk away, you know, viewing Corey, um, uh, in his in his situation, you know, with him talking about vindication, him talking about how God would vindicate you, you know, what would what would what would your I guess you know your attitude be? Well, it's kind of like what I said when we started. Uh, walking away from that, I would I thought it would be a miscarriage of justice if you're talking about vindication, but you have served almost a twenty year sentence for a crime that you didn't commit. Uh, and so it's it's natural to be curious about well, what happened to result in you finding yourself in this situation um, and basically needing to be vindicated, uh, to use his own words. And yet then we come to do the light research that we even did and, and we come up with a much different conclusion. Uh, so again, we keep having to repeat this. This is not about tearing down, but this is about at least refuting public statements that have been made, not only in the two videos that were clipped here, uh, but there was other videos and other panels where this, this prison ordeal is mentioned. Uh, and it's framed in a very similar light in terms of victimhood and vindication. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we, when you examine the court documents, and let me let me say this too. I mean, you ain't really got to be a lawyer to understand it. A lot of this, uh, there's mm -hmm. some legal stuff in here that's um, maybe you need some training for, but all you got to read is maybe the first couple of pages in terms of some of the documents that we've read to understand like the facts of the case, and then to understand the plea agreement that was signed and the. Uh, the, the, the voluntariness in which that plea agreement was agreed to in open court by, by Corey. And that's all you really got to see. And then be like, well, wait, where is the, where are you being railroaded by the system? Where can we see God's mercy being, being wrought here? I mean, as I mentioned at the beginning, there were 64 victims. And in fact, in his, in this the statement of facts that he signed, 
he attested to those 64 victims. So uh, someone was mentioning in the comments about, oh, you know, got to have the victims' uh, names and stuff like that. He didn't dispute the victims. Mm. There was no dispute about who the victims were. I lost my place where that uh, where that was actually mentioned, but it, there was no dispute about who the victims were. Mm -hmm. um, the only dispute just came later when you thought you could get off on a technicality by saying that, well, I dropped uh, the falsified statements via, via local courier as opposed to using the USPS, US Postal Service. But that's exactly why they got you on that one count that they did because that statement was dropped in the mail. But I think that way some people were mentioning about well, where was God's mercy in this? Well, they could have run wild with those 64 counts and see what they ended up with then. You might've gotten a lot more time than what you ended up getting. Right. Uh, and maybe as a broader spiritual conversation about mercy right so we you know it's inconsistent with undeserved grace to believe that you deserve it right that's, that's so right. you can't say well my pastor uh didn't ask for a downward departure from the guidelines um and that's just that's like betrayal um that's inconsistent at least with a gospel message mm. where you understand that hey uh, your sin, what do, what do you deserve as a result of your own sin? And like my old pastor used to say, as I'm pointing the finger at you, I got right. three pointing back at me. See that? That's right. That's three right. of them pointing right back at me. That's right. So what do you deserve? What do I deserve for the sin that I have committed? The sin that I continue to commit in my life? What is it that I deserve? I deserve nothing but death for, the, for that sin. Uh, and so every breath that I breathe is the mercy of God in my life. Amen. Uh, and it is, it's not because of any effort from me. It's because of the great exchange. Amen. Uh, God took my sin and put it on Christ. And then he took Christ's righteousness and put it on me. Preach, bro. And I keep, and, I, and even when I still sin, what does he do? He looks to Christ for that. Come on, like, man. Wow, bro. I, I you yeah, know, right. so it's just inconsistent to look at the entire ordeal and frame it in this framework of, again, victimhood, persecution, vindication. Right. Amen. Um, so there's one more question that that in this video I never I hadn't asked you yet, so I'm going to ask you in this video here. So take a listen. All right. Would you go to Grace Community Church if Eileen Gray was your daughter? Would I go to Grace Community Church? Well, it, it, well, see, that's why you can't answer a question because that would affect me personally. Now I've got some skin in the game. It's like the guy that jumped on my daughter or did something to violate my daughter. Um, could 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 I could I sit on the on the bus right beside him? No. Could you? Yes. Why? See, what we do sometimes is we we we, we want to make the emotional argument, and then that governs. That would be hard for me. I mean, I, I listen. I treat my I look at my daughters as though they're gold. Now, do I do I look at your daughters the same way I look at my daughter? No. There's a there's four billion other daughters on the planet. I don't look at them the same way I look at mine. And that clip, that clip from his from his uh, video defending John MacArthur and basically slamming and slandering Julie Royce, that set the whole thing in motion. I mean, it didn't matter. Nothing else. Nothing else mattered what he had said. Even when he tried to come back and try to clarify, it has made people even more angrier. Because it was a yes or no, it was a yes or no question. So the reason why I played that, number one, because I wanted to get your reaction, but number two, I wanted to remind the viewers, this is how this whole thing started. Because his response or his apologia was not David Collins' question or to try to elaborate on it. He said, Well, y'all, those who know me know what I meant. Those who know me know that I, I wouldn't, you know, but that's not what you said. But then he went back to his prison history. He went back to his prison experience. He went back to how he was unjustly you know, a sentence and, 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 and none of that had anything to do with his original statement. So I'm just asking you, how would you, how would you respond to that question? If someone asked you, if Eileen Gray were your daughter, would you go, would you go to Grace Community Church if Eileen Gray was your daughter, knowing the situation or knowing what you know about that, about that case? No, I mean, that's a simple, no answer to that. Like, uh, especially 
like you said, knowing what Eileen Gray has gone through, no, I wouldn't go. Uh, I wouldn't attend. I think it's a simple question to answer. I don't really have much more to add to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, and that's that, the, yeah, and that's the point, you know, and that's the point. So, so why wouldn't you go? I mean, but I'm saying, why wouldn't you? You say, yeah, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't attend. But why wouldn't you go? Why wouldn't you attend? I mean, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not your daughter. So why wouldn't you go if it were? I mean, if, if it weren't your daughter and you heard about that, would you still go if it were not your daughter? Oh, okay. So now you're flipping the question. If now I'm flipping the question. Daughter, yes, I'm flipping the question go? now. Yes, I'm flipping oh. the question. If it weren't my daughter, but I knew about what was going on, yes, uh, and I knew about the stonewalling that would happen when people were asking questions about what's going on, and if yes. I knew about uh, the support that was uh, provided to uh, the, the 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 criminal uh, that was in that, then no, I'm not going. Right, I'm out. Yeah, and that's and that's the, and that's somewhere that, else. Like you said. Yeah, it's a simple it's a simple question, simple answer, right? So. You know, that's why it was um, that's why it was disappointing to a lot of people. Uh, but of course, he made this video about me blaming me. And he responded to Monica Spencer and saying that nobody else had an issue with it until until he did, until he had an issue. He got mad and made everybody else, you know, respond. I'm like, I didn't make anybody do anything. I mean, so that's so yeah. now you're insulting the intelligence of other people to think for themselves and to think independently as though people can't hear. And understand the implications behind what you said and what you didn't say, which was an answer nonetheless. Right. So, right. yeah. And Christina said he never cleaned it up. He never cleaned that up. He meant it. So, um, and again, and that's why this whole thing, this whole, this whole proverbial ball got set in motion. It wasn't because of me. It was because of what he said and what he didn't say. And then he didn't even yeah. try to, you know, respond to the brother's question, which caused all of this to be where we are uh, today. So, um, so I mean, any other questions, any, I mean, any other, you know, closing thoughts, man, that you may have um, regarding this, any, any words of advice, appeal, exhortations, admonitions, warnings, you know, what, what not you have the floor. Uh, so maybe making, I'll make an appeal to Corey, Corey, uh, you know, in this particular video, we're responding to uh, some statements that were made publicly in videos that are posted on an online platform. So, uh, there's no ill intent, and I would love to have a conversation with you offline if that if you're amenable to that. Uh, so um, I will, you know, I'll I'll, I'll coordinate with Seiko on how that might happen. But not that you owe me an explanation, but I'm happy to talk to you about my reasoning, about uh, anything else, about my motivations, or anything else that might be of concern to you. So. Uh, this is because we consider you a brother. If we didn't, Amen. The, the tone of this entire video would have been a lot different. We probably would have had a whole lot more jokes, <laughs> yeah. uh, a whole lot more of, uh, you know, entertainment, as you will, if we, if it was an unbeliever. But that's not the case. Yeah. Uh, and so, brother, you know, I know the kind of contribution that you can make to the body of Christ, and uh, we just want to make sure. Uh, and it's not just you. It's it's me, Seiko, anybody else that wants to uh, avail themselves of the of a platform. I don't have a platform. I don't at least I don't think I do. But I know people. They know me. Uh, my integrity is always, uh, you know, on display as a believer, as well as you, Seiko, and everybody in the chat. Uh, so if we're going to be um, ambassadors of the gospel. Uh, if we are going to be believers who are calling this world around us that is is crumbling every single second of every single day as we see the moral fabric of our country and the world deteriorate so rapidly, uh, the judgment first begins in the house of the Lord and then it goes uh, to the world. And it's going to be hard for us to call the world to uh, consistency, to truth, if we're not consistent and truthful ourselves and so uh with that that's all i got brother no brother i i appreciate it man um again i, I thank you man for sharing and shedding your insight on that uh proverbs 17 had one question to ask you though and it was just this and i'll let you run he says as a brother in christ how do you feel personally about Corey's drastic change in regards to J to john MacArthur? you know it, it's um Setting aside the the object of that change, MacArthur, it's more about just the flipping. 
yeah. you know, it's, it's different when it comes with new information. Uh, you know, if, if there's new information that can, where you can truthfully have a different opinion, I, there's no issue with that. Uh, but this, this change, and, and, you know, you and I have talked about this privately, but the circumstances and the timeline of this change have, have just brought more suspicion than clarity. And so to me, uh, to answer your question, I mean, I'm just disappointed more, more than anything, but, you know, only he can really testify to the motivations in his own heart for why that change has occurred or what, or what, uh, what if, of, of anything is forcing him into this kind of change? Because mm. uh, as you mentioned, I mean, for at least a year, you held one position. Now you've held another uh, with very little explanation uh, as to where, why, why that change has occurred. So uh, I just feel disappointment mostly, but um, love to hear him out. Yeah, I think I, I would say this. I believe the same reason that he gave his explanation last year on why John MacArthur needs to step down, why the elders at Grace Community Church need to step down, um, why um, any and everyone involved in that he called on the reform community to demand that John MacArthur step down. He said that on a post in on, on my on my uh, video uh, in writing said that. The same way that he did that last year, I believe he needs to do that in this regard. If this information that we don't know, which I'm going to say you, he's going to be hard pressed to find some information that is going to be so revolutionary that it's going to change the, 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 the slant and, and the slope and narrative of what we already know to be true. That means Julie Royce has been lying. That means all of her work is pretty much shot. Uh, I doubt that. It means Christianity Today's work is shot. I doubt that. That means Brett Detweiler's work is shot. That means my work is shot. And I doubt all of that. So, but if there's information that we, that he knows that is contrary, and I'm talking about biblically contrary, factually contrary to what we have been told, then he owes that to the body of Christ, to the people that he has been communicating that same, that same uh, narrative and disposition to last year. If he can't do that, yeah. then he's responsible for what we are, are charging him with. And that's being double minded. That's being inconsistent. That's being slanderous. And that's, and that's also lying. And he needs to repent for that. So I was, I would just say that, you know, um, going forward, this is not about, you know, uh, Seiko versus Corey. This is about Seiko. Ver this, I mean, this is about Corey versus God. And he's going to lose. He is going to lose. God says he fights the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That, that is that is a lose lose situation. He's not going to win with that, and so it, it is our responsibility to as much as we possibly can to come alongside and reach out to this brother, whether you call him or whether you text him, because I know he gets he gets both of them. Whether he wants to respond to it, that's on him. But he can't say he cannot say that he has not been he has not been reached out to. He cannot say that he has not been contacted. He cannot say that no one has tried to you know appeal to him to do what is right. But when you got people that's echoing in, in your little echo sound chambers that are basically rah rah you on, then you can't you can't even hear the truth because you're so focused on hearing your own fanfare, and um, and that's where and that's where the danger comes, I believe, um, because that's where I think that people's downfall when you're not willing to listen, but onto those that basically feed your you know feed your pride and your ego. We all have to be guarded. We all have to be guarded from that. Um, yeah. So. Uh, anyway, like I said, brother, I, I appreciate it, man. Uh, thank you so much yeah, for that. Um, I don't know if you want to people to know how to reach out to you, but probably on Facebook because you're not really known uh, anywhere else on these social media streets. If they want to contact you or have any questions, do you want to? Yeah, your Facebook I'm name? on Facebook under my name. Uh, I think I mo know most of the folks in the chat anyway. Yeah, from, yeah. Okay. Uh, interacting on your page. So, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you, man. Well, man, I appreciate it, man. I'll be talking to you again soon, man. Love you, my brother. All righty. All right, you got guys. it. Yes, sir. All right, y'all. That is it for me. Um, hopefully you heard the information, you heard the truth uh, regarding this whole um, ordeal. Um, I just, I really hope and pray, man, that some people's eyes have been open uh, now that the, that the, that the truth of this is out. Uh, people can say now, okay, now, now I, now I see it. Now I see it. I don't have to like Seiko. I don't have to like how he did it and, and, and why he's doing it. But is it true? 
the same attitude and mindset that 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 you know Corey had last year about people attacking Julia Roy. He said it didn't matter if she was having a stake out in front of his house. If she's if what she's saying is true, that's all that matters. Focus on what is true. Focus on what is true, and that's what we're supposed to focus on. What is true. Um, I'm going to close this verse of scripture, this passage of scripture, and now we'll let everyone go home. First Peter, I mean, first Timothy chapter one, verse 12, Paul says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, putting me into service, even though I formerly was, I formerly, I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor. Yet I was shown mercy. Notice, not vindicated. Not that he was, he, he, Paul didn't say I was vindicated. He says, no, yet I was shown mercy. Why? Because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord Jesus was more than abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. It is a trustworthy statement, verse 15, deserving full acceptance. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am foremost of all. Yet for this reason, I found mercy. He says it again, not vindicated. Yet for this reason, I, I found mercy so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That is my time, y'all. I thank you all so much for yours. Um, please, if you have been blessed by this, I know it's kind of hard, difficult to hear, um, but please like, share, subscribe to this channel. Um, we definitely appreciate it. Uh, thank you those of you who have uh, been supporting this ministry. Thank you all for that. Uh, you can do that by just clicking the uh, the thumbnail. I mean, click, 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 click in the thumb and, um, and and the subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to support the ministry finance, you can do that also by clicking the donation links below. Uh, we ask for those of you, if you uh, if you are, if you, you do normally use Super Chat, we are encouraging you to use these three options because uh, we don't receive your funds. We don't receive the payments. We don't receive the gifts until the following month. And so a lot of you don't know that. Uh, but to help it to become more expedited and quickly received, we, we ask for you all to use the donation links below at the bottom of the video there. Also, BCV, you can go to the BCV store. You can select any of the merchandise there, um, hats, hoodies, things of that nature. Uh, we do appreciate that. Uh, if you would go to the BCV store, uh, we have items there for your review and for your purchasing pleasure. All right. And also, please pray for Corey. Please pray for his family. Pray that God will open his eyes. Pray that God will open all of our eyes. That we stand on the word of God, that we stand on the truth. We love Corey Miner because Corey Miner is one of us. He's a he's a brother. He's just a brother that right now is in sin that we're encouraging, that we are, we are calling for him to repent, to lovingly repent. Mm -hmm. That he should take this as another means of God's mercy and that in God's grace. And so let's do that, shall we? Thank you all for the for the um for the likes, even for the unlikes. Thank you for the moderators. Thank you for holding it down. Even my new moderators that have joined. Thank you so much. Facebook family, thank you all for joining as well, too. Uh, join me tomorrow night. Have an interesting uh, Bible study, interesting topic I'm going to discuss. And uh, we're going to talk about would you allow or would your church or could these men attend your church? Go to the thumbnail, go to my channel, and you'll see those two individuals. We're going to talk about that, Lord willing, tomorrow on the BCV channel. All right. That is my time. I thank you all so much for yours. Y'all know the drill. Have a great week. But y'all know the drill. Whatever you do, do all to the glory and honor of God. God bless. Thank you for sharing this night. God bless you. Good night. <laughs>